strike. Now let's check in with Rob at the ballpark. All right, friends. Well, a pleasant good morning. A little early morning baseball here in Houston, Texas from Minute Maid Park. I'm Rob Pip, along with my good friend Jason Barfield as we've got the Shriners Classic here today again at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. A beautiful facility. Looking forward to this one today. And this is the opening game of this entire Shriners Hospital for Children's College Classic as Sam Houston battling Rice. The Bearcats will be the visiting team, so Rice will play in the bottom of the innings. But, Jason, good to be here today. You'll have the call on the first three. I'll take the middle, and then you'll wrap it up. But always a fun opportunity to be here. Sam Houston, this is their third appearance at Minute Maid Park, and we're set for a pretty good game. The Bearcats looking to rebound after some losses. Yeah, this is always one of my favorite events of the year, uh, getting the chance to come down to the College Classic uh, for years just always some of the best baseball being played and it's so great the Bearcats have finally been a part of this now for the third time on well, both teams uh, making their way now and we will turn it over for our country's national anthem playing of our country's national anthem baseball here on a Friday morning. How about it, Jason? A lot of fun to be out here early in the morning. We came up here a few hours ago. You and I drove separately, but got here a few hours ago and looking forward to this baseball game here this morning. You know, I think there's just something about, you know, when everything shut down a year ago, it was right at the start of the baseball season. And this is something that we really miss. We, you know, we got through a football season. We got through a basketball season before the show. We didn't get baseball. And, you know, so I think that was a big part, you know, going through the summer, we didn't have much baseball. And Major League Baseball was late starting. And, you know, most people didn't get a chance to get out to a ballpark and, and watch a game. And uh, so I think there's just something special about being here at Minute Maid, you know, especially for me, I've seen over 100 games here. I've seen a ton of baseball be played here between the College Classic, which I try to come to every year, even if the Bearcats aren't in it, to Astros games. I went up to the NLCS last year and was able to watch the Braves Dodgers play. But there's just something about it and being in this setting, such a beautiful ballpark. And, you know, Minute Maid Park, the Astros, they were one of the first to really do these college classics. You see it a lot now. You know, a lot of minor league parks do it. A lot of the major league parks do it. But this is really one of the first that decided, hey, we're going to get together some of the best college baseball in the state, in the country some years, and we're going to put together a tournament and have fans come out and really kick off the spring here. And, uh, you know, this, is, this has been something that's really been special for college baseball for a long time. And having the Bearcats part of this, 2014, they came down here, won the first two games, played Texas for the championship in that first year. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a lot of fun to come down here, and I'm, I'm really glad that we, we get to be part of this. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday matchup. Sam Houston, of course, facing Rice here this morning. And then tomorrow, it will be the Bearcats versus Texas Tech. And then on Sunday, Sam Houston will battle Texas Christian University. So not easy teams here for Sam Houston. We talk about a lot of Big 12 opponents. Uh, the Bearcats, of course, then after this one, will head over to Texas on Tuesday, another Big 12 opponent. But Jason, set for a good one here. We'll step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and more. Stay with us. This is Bearcat Baseball on the Bearcat Sports Network. 
Only 15% of collision repair shops achieve ICAR Gold Class status, the highest training level recognized in the industry. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 proud to be one of them. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. They invest in training because they would never cut corners with your family's safety at stake, and neither should you. Get your vehicle repaired at Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45, where your safety is their top priority. Eric Barbosa, operating partner for Henson CDJR, and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero store-wide with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDJR, your dealer for life. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park. Jason Barfield here, and we are moments away from the first pitch. We'll go ahead and run the Starting lineups for you first for the Bearcats, who are the visiting team today, and will be hitting here first to get us started. Leading off for the Bearcats, a bit of a change in the starting lineup. Colton Kowser will move to the leadoff spot. Kowser hitting 263 this season, looking to see if the Cats can generate something at the top of the order. Kowser leading off, playing in center field. He'll be followed by Christian Smith, the designated hitter, hitting in the two hole. And then Jack Rogers will hit third, playing first base. In the four hole for the Bearcats, Blake Facher. He will be out in right field, followed by Gavin Johnson, who is catching and hitting fifth. Clayton Chadwick will hit sixth, play in left field. Jackson Lofton, who moves from the leadoff spot, he'll drop down to seven in the order. Just really struggling at the plate, so maybe changing him around in the batting order, kind of get him going. He's followed by Corbin Vines, who hits eighth and will play third. And then Anthony McKenzie will round it out for the Bearcats. McKenzie getting the start at second base. So once again, it's Kowser, Smith, Rogers, one, two, three. Facher, Johnson, Chadwick hitting four, five, six. And then Lofton, Vines, and McKenzie hitting seven, eight, nine. On the hill is Tyler Davis. We'll break him down a little bit as uh, we get to the bottom half of the inning. On the hill today for the Rice Owls is Blake Brogan, uh, 727 ERA, 0-1 record on the season. He is making his third start of the year. Uh, two starts, eight and two-thirds innings of work, 12 hits, seven runs, all earned, five strikeouts, four walks. Opponents are hitting 364 against him. And for a Bearcat baseball team that is kind of struggling at the plate right now, you know, maybe an opportunity to kind of jump out on the starting pitcher, Brogdon, who has getting up a lot of hits this year, and see if they could get something going in the early going. Yeah, the bats just haven't been there for Sam Houston, of course, uh, dropping the series versus the Roadrunners back in Huntsville this past weekend. Thought maybe a little bit of an opportunity to rebound at Baylor just a couple of nights ago. And unfortunately, the Bearcats no runs in that ball game. Again, the bats just haven't been hot, but hopefully they can come out here this morning. Maybe it's going to take a morning to kind of wake things up a little bit, Jason. So we're excited about this one as the Bearcats step up, and we're just moments away from that first pitch. Uh, it's going to be Colton Kowser leading it off for the Bearcats. Kowser has started every game this year, 19 at-bats on the season, five hits, five runs scored. He's got a triple, but still has not driven in a run yet, and that's mainly because he hadn't just had a whole lot of guys on base. This year, Kowser has had just two at-bats with runners on base. Hard to drive them in if they're not on for you. Yeah, you talk about runners on base. Well, the Cats have left a lot on base this season. We saw several games leaving three on. You don't want to start that here this morning. And we'll see if they can get out to an early hit here. And it'd be nice to have a little leadoff to start this ball game. As Colton Kowser waits for, I guess we're waiting on TV to come in. Those TV guys, man, i tell you what. <laughs> Radio's easy. We just show up and flip a switch. We're ready to go, Jason. You know, a little bit of a sparse crowd here. They are allowing some folks in here. Of course, this is uh, the admit it made. They are allowing folks in here today. And it's good to see some fans. We saw, I saw quite a few cars actually coming down the tollway. Uh, with SHSU logos on the back here for this 21st annual Shriners Hospital for Children's College Classic. And as we go on, Jason, I'll talk a little bit more about what this means for Shriners as well. For sure. How many years did you say now? 20? 21st. 21st year, yeah. 
They've, they've been doing this one a long time. They've brought in some of the top teams in the country to play here. It's an all-Texas affair this season. As we're now set and ready to go as Colton Kowser will stand in for the Bearcats, the junior out of Cy Ranch High School. First pitch, fastball in for a strike. We are underway. 11.04 a.m., almost right on cue, right on schedule. 0 1 pitch misses outside. Bearcats versus the Rice Owls. Boy, these teams have seen a lot of each other over the years. Fastball missed outside to Kowser. Count goes to 2 and 1. Again, it's Kowser, Christian Smith, and Jack Rogers. Leading it off for the Bearcats. 2-1 offering on the way to Kowser. A little half-hearted swing. Got tied up. That ball ran in on the hands on him, and the count's even up two balls, two strikes. Rice coming off a, a big victory versus Prairie View. They dropped their previous season, uh, series versus Louisiana. That's a tough contest to go against. That fastball missed out in a way. The count goes full to Colton Kowser. Five hits on the year. He has drawn four walks as well. 391 on base percentage. Seven strikeouts this year, too. And you know when he gets that number down is that one is fouled back against the screen. Of course, Kowser getting a lot of attention from the scouts. He's ranked by MLB.com as the number 13 overall prospect for the 2021 draft. D1Baseball.com has him as the 14th collegiate prospect in the draft. So another 3-2 pitch comes, chopped down to third, glove, nice little scoop over there, fire across the diamond, and it's a bang-bang play. Kowser thought he was safe. In fact, he gave the safe sign as he crossed the bag, but he's called out. Just shy of being able to beat that one out, Como with nice field work over there to Bullman at first, and we're one away. So we were hoping for a little leadoff single, didn't get it, so we'll see if the second in the order can take care of that here for Sam Houston. Yeah, that's been a struggle for the Bearcats, getting that leadoff guy on. Christian Smith will stand in for the Bearcats. First offering to Smith, misses high for a ball. Smith has started every game this year. He is an identical 263 average to Colton Kowser, five hits and 19 at-bats. Sends one the opposite way, diving stop, but it's off the glove, and it'll roll out into right field for a base hit. So a hit for Christian Smith. And the Cats have a base runner on. Give credit to Carp. He gave it a dive, got a glove on it, and knocked it down. But it still trickled out into right field. Yeah, Carp was out there trying to make a play. But, hey, we'll take a little one-out leadoff here for Smith. That's a great opportunity for the Bearcats. But, again, the story this year has been leaving those base runners on. Will they be able to bring them around here this morning? Well, Jack Rogers is certainly a guy you'd like his chances to do it. Rogers hitting 444 this year. So he fouls that one off. His hitting streak, I believe it was 16 games, came to an end Tuesday night in Waco. And it came off of a robbed home run. Ended that hitting streak. Rogers, one home run on the year. He's driven in four. Goes the other way with it, and it's foul ball. And I tell you what, I think I'm going to call it right now. I don't do, normally do this. <laughs> uh -oh. I think Rodgers is homering this weekend, and he's going to put it in the Crawford boxes. Okay. I'm calling a Crawford box Jack Rodgers home run at some point this weekend. But that's just that, you know, when you look at the power that he has, 15 home runs in his career, I believe 12 of them have been the opposite direction. That's a spot he likes to go. Swing and a miss here, and Rodgers is down on strikes for the second out of the inning. Chase the curveball down low. And so there's two away on the Bearcats. So Brogdon was able to go to the curveball, just kind of buried it right down there in the batter's box. Got Rodgers to chase. There's two down, and Blake Fachers the hitter. 167 average on the year for Facher. 
Swings and misses at that one. Another off-speed pitch down in the dirt, and Facher was well out in front of it. Yeah, Facher would be a great opportunity here for, get it, for him to get his fourth hit of the season, three coming into this ball game. Junior out of Cy Fair. Came to the Bearcats via Blinn and Lu so Ragin Cajun. Runner off and moving, fly ball lifted out into center field, and it's on the run, reaching up, making the grab. And that will do it for the Bearcats as Garby chased it down out in center field. Facher put a pretty good little jolt on it, but it was chased down, and that does it for the Bearcats here in the first. We'll go to the bottom half. We're scoreless. This is Bearcat Baseball here on the Bearcat Sports Network. To, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Eric Barbosa, General Manager at Henson Ford and we're letting our good deals roll during our parade of savings. We'll match your tax refund up to $2,500 on any new Ford truck like a 2021 F-150 Super Group. That's up to $5,000 to use as a down payment. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We'll even deliver your vehicle for free. Rolling out big savings today only at Henson Ford, your dealer for life. Back here at Minute Maid Park as we go to the bottom of the first inning. And we'll set everything up for you. First for the Rice Owls. Run down their lineup. Justin Dunlop leads off hitting in the DH spot. You don't see a DH in the leadoff spot very often. Kate Edwards bats second in left. Braden Como bats third. Guy Garby made that great play to end the first. He is the four-hole hitter. Bradley Knighting will be in right field hitting fifth. Austin Bullman hits sixth, playing first. Will Carp at second, bat seventh. Justin Long hits eighth, and Hal Hughes will round it out for the Owls. And on the hill for the Bearcats today, Tyler Davis, a six foot three right-handed pitcher. He is a junior out of Oak Ridge High School. Made the long route though to get to the Bearcats via Wichita State and Panola College before landing about 35 miles from his home. So Davis will get the start on the hill for the Cats. Some numbers on him. He's got a 1-0 record this year, a 180 ERA. He worked five last Friday against UTSA and got the win. Four hits, one run. It was earned, a walk and four strikeouts. Opponents hitting 222 against him. So Davis looking to pick up where he left off. Good outing on Friday. Gets the nod here on a... Friday afternoon game against the Rice Owls as Justin Dunlap will lead it off. First pitch fastball from Davis in for a strike. Dunlap out of Dripping Springs, sophomore. It's kind of up your way, Rob. Beautiful area just outside of Austin, Texas. Off the fist, little blooper. Davis comes over, makes the grab, loses the hat, and there's one down. Boy, how about that for Davis as he had to dart over there to that first base line, but those are tough. There's not always an able opportunity to grab those in, but Davis doing a great job and a lot of speed out there behind his feet off that mound very quickly. I tell you what, the, the thing that I've, you know, learned about this ballpark, talking to our guys who have played here before and, you know, years past when we've been here, is the backdrop is completely different. And especially for those fielders, when a ball is put up in the air, it's different than what you're used to in the smaller college ballparks, and it takes an adjustment. So good job by Davis there as the first pitch to Cade Edwards is sent into center field. Colton Kowser just a couple steps over, makes the grab, and there's two quick outs. Boy, I like that. Two up, two down here very quick for uh, Tyler Davis on the mound. Just kind of setting up a little bit of that defense there, Jason, as well. Chadwick, Kowser, and Facher from left to right. Uh, that's been a good combination so far this season. They had... A fair game versus Baylor. Dropped that contest. Did Sam Houston 4-0 to just uh, back on. Boy, what was that? That was just a few nights ago. Things are just blending together right now in the sports world. 
going from baseball to basketball <laughs> to football and back around again as Braden Como stands in for the Owls. First pitch, curveball in for a strike. Really good start here again for Davis on the mound for the Bearcats. Davis is on the hill. He's setting ready to go, not wasting a lot of time out there. 0-1 offering on the way off the bat. May have been the knob of the bat on a little check swing from Como. Well, you know, talking about the Rice Owls, their previous game versus Prairie View on Wednesday, they started a little dry. There's two scoreless innings, but then they exploded for six runs. They ended up victorious in that game 10-0. So this is a team that may take a little bit to get started. We'll see if the Bearcats can hold them. Pitch on the way. Fastball missed down and away. Count goes to one and two. Once again, we are at Minute Maid Park today. The 21st Shriners Hospitals for Children College Classic. One, two offering away from Davis, and that one is pulled down the line foul. If you've never been to Minute Maid Park before, certainly um, it is a gorgeous setting for baseball. Of course, the Crawford box is out in left field, 315 down the line, 362 to the gaps, 409 to center. No more hill out there. They got that rid of that a couple of years ago. 373 to the right field gap. It's pitch on the way, and that one is sent out into right field, and it's going to be in for a base hit. So a hit for the Owls, each team with a base knock, and Rice has a two-out runner aboard. Yeah, Como just able to find a little bit of life there out at right, dropped it right where it needed to go. Facher with the field work, but not before, of course, easily getting on to first there for Como. You know, eight different Owls recorded a base hit out of 11 hits, one away from the season high for Rice versus Houston Baptist in the opening weekend of the season. So this is a team that can definitely swing the bat. This guy Garibay will stand in. First pitch, maybe a little slider there from Davis, just missed. Outside part of the plate, couldn't catch it, counts 1-0. Offering on the way. Oh, he pulled the string on him there. Evens count up one ball, one strike. Freshman maybe a little too hungry down there. Swung on that one. Good pitch, though, on the mound from Davis. Just down the road from here, Garibay out of Lamarck. Offering on the way. Fly ball lifted out into right field. It's hooking towards the line, and it is a foul ball. Right into that corner, we lost view of it. There is one, two little parts of the park that we can't see. And that's in those two corners there. Yeah, that right, of course, left and right. And Jason, you talk about the line down there. What is that, maybe about two feet from that line yeah, and, and the wall? There's not a lot of foul territory over there. So the count remains, one ball, two strikes, two down here, and that pitch is just inside. Oh, Davis thought it was it. He was three steps towards the dugout. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of pumping his fist, and he thought he had it. He thought he had. <laughs> so the count will even up, two balls, two strikes. Two down here in the inning. Throw over to first. Oh, I think it was there in time, but Jack Rogers couldn't squeeze it in the glove. I don't know if maybe that got a piece of the glove, or if maybe that might have hit Como. I was going to say Como had a pretty good lead off there, and he got back just in the amount of time, but if Rodgers could have hold on to that, we could, have, we could be talking about heading to the second. And there is a fly ball lifted out into right field. Fature on the run, reaches up, makes the grab two steps shy of the wall. So a little two-out single for the Owls. Davis works around it. And we have one inning in the books here at Minute Maid Park. We are scoreless. This is Sam Houston Baseball on the Bearcat Sports Network.
with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. Eric Barbosa, operating partner for Henson CDJR, and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero store-wide with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDJR, your dealer for life. We go to the second here at Minute Maid Park. Jason Barfield alongside Rob Hip. First of three this weekend down in Houston for the College Classic. Yeah, just enjoy being down here. Of course, this is the 21st annual Shriners Hospital for Children's College Classic returning here to Minute Maid. It's a three-day, six-team, nine-game tournament held here every spring. And Despite COVID and everything and a socially distant crowd here and the facilities at Minute Maid, great to be back here again this season. There's some questions up in the air at first, but it's good to have baseball continuing. Yeah, and this tournament was up in the air as, as schedules started to shuffle. And um, I, I think that was one of the things that just everybody involved understood the importance of this event. And um, they found a way to make it work uh, even after schedules had changed. So... Good to see this back in play as Gavin Johnson stands in for the Bearcats here in the second and watches a first pitch strike go by. Johnson hitting 357 on the season, five hits and 14 at-bats, couple of doubles, couple of runs driven in. And chases a high fastball there. And he's down in the count 0-2. Yeah, quick 0-2 here for Johnson, the left-handed batter. I want to see some of these left bats get hit in this year. That ball bounces in. Johnson, a senior out of San Antonio. O'Connor High School. He actually started his college career at Rice. He redshirted his freshman season at Rice. That pitch missed outside. Never did appear in a game for the Owls. Went to New Mexico Junior College after that. Was a third team all academic honoree during the 2017 season. Pops one foul back out of play. And that one up off the top of the second deck. No fans are up there. Took a couple of bounces. Actually the third deck, Jason, and then it bounced down to the first. And I'm going to tell you, if you're sitting down there on that uh, first deck, you better be careful. You got to keep your head up because those balls will come bouncing right down onto you. Pitch on the way to Johnson, a slow roller out to second. Fielded there and fired across, and Johnson is retired. Carp had to range over to his left a little bit to get there. And there's one down on the Bearcats. Jason, quite a few folks joining us are in the booth uh, social media feed. Appreciate all them for joining us this morning. Uh, Pete Capitello asking uh, thanks for casting, wanting to know where to watch the game. It's being televised on AT&T Sportsnet Southwest and streamed on Astros.com and MLB.com. Clayton Chadwick stands in. Yeah, we don't mind if you turn the stream on. Just keep our audio up. That's, yeah. all, that's all we ask. Clayton Chadwick goes the other way, fouls it off. Although if you do choose to listen to the, to the stream broadcast, we understand. Brett Dolan is on the call over there. Good guy. Brett Dolan's been around for some Really nice Sam Houston moments as well. Offering on the way to Chadwick. Fastball just missed outside. I'm sure Brogdon wanted that one. Count goes to two and one. Clayton Chadwick hitting 200 on the year. Freshman out of Lavernia. Goes the other way with this one. Sends it down the line. It's going to drop in for a base hit. It's going to roll all the way to the Crawford box. Chadwick digging around first. Standing up with a double. Well, 
Well, nice little one-out double there for Chadwick as he rounded. And you mentioned just then on that call, Jason, it kind of bounced around in that left corner over there near the warning track, allowing Chadwick to run around. I think he was going to go anyways. Oh, Chadwick was definitely thinking two off the bat. That'll bring Jackson Lofton to the plate, sophomore out of spring. One out here, Lofton now hitting in the seven hole today, seeing if they can change things up a little bit for him and get it going. First pitch in for a strike, curveball. And we saw in that weekend series versus the Roadrunners, the, especially in the, in the final game on Sunday, the top of the order not really doing much. It was the bottom of the order that was taking care of a little bit of business. Yeah, Lofton one hit this year and 20 at-bats. RBI opportunity here, though. Jackson Lofton standing in with Chadwick at second. Chases one down low, and he's quickly in a hole 0-2. You know, even through these struggles at the plate, he hadn't struck out a whole lot, just two strikeouts in his 20 at-bats. He's been putting the ball in play, just hadn't been able to find any patches of green grass. Down in the count here, 0-2. Offering on the way from Brogdon, check swing. He held it up. The pitch missed. And the count goes to one and two. Corbin Vines waits on deck. Bearcats trying to strike first here. A one-out double has Clayton Chadwick standing down at second. Brogdon's taking his time out there. And yeah, Lofton's going to ask for time. You know, you mentioned on deck and not trying to put the horse in front of the cart here or the cart in front of the horse, Jason, but Vines with the home run already this season. So Bearcats definitely with a little bit of an opportunity here. Hopefully Lofton can find a way to get on. One-two pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Lofton down on strikes. And there's two down here in the inning. Brogdon went with the off-speed pitch there and... Lofton was out in front of it. So with two down, Corbin Vines will stand in. Vines also with just one hit on the season. He's one for 16. That one hit, though, is a home run. Vines a junior out of Hempstead. Pitch on the way to Vines, curve ball, that one in for a strike. Brogdon right now really dialed in. Well, that pitch just dropped in that box as well. Vines was taking a look at it. He thought maybe a little too low. Clayton Chadwick stands down at second. Vines trying to pick him up, a one-out double. Put him in scoring position. Now they're going to look back that way and... Chadwick goes scampering back to the bag. Set and ready to go. Another 0-1 offering. On the way to Vines. Pitch coming. That's sent the other way. Chadwick will be sent home. The throw will come. It's going to be cut off. And it's an RBI single for Corbin Vines. Chadwick scores, and the Bearcats are on the board first. All right. Well, we talked about Vines. Good to have him back there in the bottom of the lineup doing the magic here as uh, Vines able to bring one around. And, boy, how about that? Start cooking those steaks. I always call them the ribeyes, Jason. I'm, I, we're hungry, man. Cook some ribeyes. Let's eat. Well, I tell you what, that's got to feel good for a Bearcat offense that have left a lot of guys in scoring position this season. That has been a struggle but getting a two-out base knock to bring home a run, maybe that eases the pressure a little bit on these Bearcat hitters as Anthony McKenzie will stand in. First pitch swinging, sends a fly ball out into left field, and coming on to make the grab is Edwards, and that does it for the Bearcats. But they get a double, they get an RBI single, and the Bearcats are on the board first. We'll go to the bottom half of the second inning. Cats on top, one nothing here on the Bearcat Sports Network. And 
they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett & Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. TJ Burdett & Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit TJ Burdett & Sons on Facebook for more info. Back here at Minute Maid Park, we go to the bottom of the second inning. Bearcats leading it one to nothing on a Corbin Vines RBI single. It'll be five, six, seven in the Rice Owl order. Well, we mentioned kind of in between that break, Jason, it was good for the Cats to finally find a little bit of life here. They've left a lot on this season so far and you know, entering this contest one and four and on a three game skid, that'll get your confidence going and maybe being here at Minute Maid, a little bit of OJ this morning, helping them to get rolling early here in Houston. You went with the OJ line, huh? <laughs> it just popped into my head. Sometimes I should just, you know, just leave it where it is, right, Jason? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Bradley Knighting will stand in for the Owls, five, six, seven in the order. Hitting 320 on the year, seven hits and 25 at bats, or eight hits rather, seven runs driven in. First pitch, ooh, fastball missed down low. Oh, that one was close. That ball had some pop to it. You can hear that glove echo around the yard. 1 0 pitch on the way from Davis, took a little something off of it, and it goes by four strike, evens the count up, one ball, one strike. Knighting out of North Richland Hills. Swings and fouls that one off. That one's going to get up into the top deck and then kick back down. Like I said, heads up. Well, I might have caught a bare hand on the way down. <laughs> yeah, I saw the fan down there with his right hand, and he thought it was going to be an easy grab, and it bounced off his hand. He kind of, you know, flipped his hand a little bit. It doesn't. It's not an easy catch. You need to wear a glove sometimes. A 1-2 pitch on the way from Davis. Just missed inside. Count even up two balls, two strikes. Night Keller High School. Goes the other way with this one. Lifts it into left field, and it is tailing and foul out of play. A couple of kids out there chasing that foul ball. But I tell you what, today is a day. If you want to get out and chase some foul balls, today's the day to get out and do it. A couple of kids down there with their gloves. I'm going to see if they can get some souvenirs. Bring a duffel bag. It could be a good day for gathering. As the count's even up, two balls, two strikes. Offering on the way from Davis. Ground ball out to short. Lofton, nice little hop. Fires across, and there's one down here in the second inning. Lofton and Vines, good communication over there. Vines was making his way over to third. To, thought about getting that grab. Lofton told him, I've got it. And, again, good field work here for the Bearcats. Get that one out. Yeah, Lofton got the good hop, chest high, allowed him to get his feet settled and fire across the diamond. As Austin Bullman will stand in. Junior out of Shepherdstown, West Virginia. First pitch misses outside for a ball. Bullman on the year hitting 136. He started six games as he sends this ball out into right field and backpedaling and making the grab just shy of the warning track is Facher. And there's two down. Like it so far, two up, two down. It's three in a row going back to the first for Tyler Davis. He's only allowed one hit. It was a single by Como back in the uh, the third or back in the first on the third batter. So he settled in really nicely here to start this morning. 
Will Carp will stand in, 222 average on the year. He is a grad senior out of Princeton, New Jersey. His first pitch from Davis in for a strike. He's got the curveball working so far. Carp has started all seven games for the Owls this year. Six hits and 27 at-bats. Fastball in for a strike. Took a second one down there, the umpire, but I'll tell you that one just got the corner there on the outside as it came back. 0-2 offering on the way from Davis. Just missed outside. He tried to get him to chase. Carp wasn't having it, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. Davis standing tall out on the hill. Takes the look in, ready to go. One-two pitch coming, curveball, called strike three. Davis gets his first strikeout of the ball game, and that does it for the Owls here in the bottom of the second inning. They go one, two, three in the second. We'll go to the third. Cats leading it one to nothing. This is Sam Houston Baseball on the Bearcats Sports Network. choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. Eric Barbosa, General Manager at Henson Ford, and we're letting our good deals roll during our parade of savings. We'll match your tax refund up to $2,500 on any new Ford truck like a 2021 F-150 Super Crew. That's up to $5,000 to use as a down payment. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We'll even deliver your vehicle for free. Rolling out big savings today only at Henson Ford, your dealer for life. We go to the third inning. Jason Barfield here alongside Rob Hip. Bearcats leading the Rice Owls one to nothing as we go back to the top of the order. Colton Kowser, be Kowser, Smith, and Rogers. Bearcats got a run in the second. Look to see if they can keep that momentum going here. Cats really need a win here today. One and four on the season. Their one win was a week ago against UTSA, the first game of three, but really struggled in games two and three of that series and then dropped a tough one against Baylor on Tuesday. So they've lost three straight and uh, trying to get back into, a, back into a rhythm here. Tough schedule, Rice, Texas Tech, and TCU this weekend, followed by Texas on Tuesday. Yeah, I was just about to mention that. It's so important to get a win here because you're facing three top 20 ranked opponents, all of them in the Big 12 after this one starting, of course, tomorrow versus Tech and then Sunday at TCU, and then it's uh, Longhorns. Kowser lines one the other way. It's going to get down. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. Kowser digging into second, and he'll throw the brakes on there. Leadoff double for Colton Kowser, and the Cats have a little something cooking here in the third. How about that? You move Kowser into that. First in the order, and he went 0 for 1 to start things, but a nice little stand-up double there to get things underway here in this third inning. We'll see how the Cats decide to play this one with Christian Smith, the designated hitter in the box. Kowser standing down at second. See if they decide to play a little small ball, move the runner up, or let Christian Smith see if he can drive him home. And Smith has a little single earlier today already. First pitch to Smith, curveball, misses up and in. Smith one for one today. He singled back in the first inning. He's driven in a couple this year. He's got Jack Rogers hitting behind him as well. So he's probably going to get a chance to swing at something. They're certainly not going to want to put Smith on ahead of Rogers, the hottest hitter on the team. These two teams last faced each other back in 2019. It was on April the 2nd in Huntsville. 
Bearcats losing that contest 5-11. to uh, But this has been a pretty close series over the history, dating all the way back, I uh, believe, back in the 60s. Been pretty close with uh, Sam Houston 64 wins, 61 losses all time versus Rice. Typically see each other twice a year, sometimes more. They've met in the regionals a couple of times. Pitch on the way to Smith, flies one the other way into right field on the run, reaching up, making the grab is Knighting. He goes all the way to the warning track and it allows Kowser to move into third. So the Cats have a runner 90 feet away with one down here. No, Knighting had that grab back there at right, but he kind of lost his footing as he came down. He was still able to hold on to it, but he was backpedaling, fell there, and laid on his left hand with that glove in his hand. Uh, so luckily he was able to hold on to that one. And Christian Smith did the right thing. He ran it out all the way to second, keeping an eye out there just to make sure Knighting held on to it before finally peeling off and heading back to the dugout. So one down here in the third. Kowser at third. Jack Rogers stands in. Rogers struck out his first time up. 421 batting average so far this year. That pitch is in for a strike. Rogers, a junior out of spring, played a school ball at Klein Collins. It's been a big part of this team over the last several years. Pitch on the way, misses outside. Rogers, one home run on the year. That came in the Sunday game against UTSA. It was an opposite field shot. Lined out towards the scoreboard at the Don. So 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Jack Rogers. Swung on, fly ball, and it's going to tail out of play. Sent it the opposite direction. Hey, nice little grab out there in the seats. Bearcat fan in orange, bear handing that one. It's those same kiddos. You talked about bringing the duffel bag earlier. We've seen three or four of them hit over there already so far this morning. Four hits now for the Bearcats in this game. See if they can cash in. Pitch to Rogers. Fastball missed out and away. Cows are on with a leadoff double. Moved over to third on a fly ball to right. Anything out of the infield should be able to get Kowser home. Pitch on the way to Rogers. Fly ball lifted out into right field. It's on a line. It's going to get down for a base hit. Kowser's going to score. Rogers digs around first. Stands up. RBI double Jack Rogers. Boy, he just dropped the barrel of the bat head on that one and ripped it to right. Pretty swing out of the left-handed batter's box. For Jack Rogers, that is RBI number five on the season, and the Cats have a 2-0 lead. The Coles are staying hot on the grill, Jason. Two ribeyes already coming in here, and the Bearcats looking strong with that 2-0 advantage. Blake Facher will stand in for the Bearcats. Facher sent a fly ball out to center field. He hit it on a rope his first time up. First pitch to Facher, chalk down to third. Glove there by Como, nice play. Fires across, Rogers has to stay put at second. So two down in the inning now. Gavin Johnson will be the hitter. Johnson grounded out to second his first time up. Hitting 333 on the season. Johnson is driven in two this year. A base hit would make it three. Jack Rogers stands down at second. Pitch on the way. Fly ball lifted foul to right side. Cats looking to put a crooked number on the board. One in the second, one here in the third, leading it two to nothing over the Rice Owls. The 
Now look back at second. Nobody covering the bag. Rogers just slowly trots back. We'll reset things here. Pitch on the way. Fly ball lifted out into center field. It's going to drop in for a hit. Rogers digs around third. He will go in to score. RBI single, and the Bearcats lead it three to nothing. Another beautiful hit this time over there to left. Jason, I was going to ask, how do you like your steaks, man? Medium rare with a little horseradish sauce. I don't know about the horseradish. <laughs> I don't need a whole lot added to my steak. Just keep them coming, though. That's right. Keep them coming. Nice we, little 3-0 lead here for the Bearcats. we got to visit out to the mound. Hadn't seen anybody get up and working yet for the Owls. But everybody will come in for this chat. And, uh, Rob, this is, this is the start the Bearcats were looking for. Six hits now here in the third. This is what we knew was in the offense. Just hadn't seen it yet this year. They've only left a couple of on, and, yeah, we've been waiting for that breakout game. I mentioned earlier the Cats on a little three-game skid here. They took that opening series versus UTSA in game one, but then dropped the next two just this previous weekend. It was uh, uh, just a flat one there at Baylor, not putting in any runs, losing that contest 4-0. to zero. So they came out here this morning so far. Bats are hitting, only leaving two on, as I just said. Sam Houston with a 3-0 lead. This is the way they need to get started, especially as we mentioned earlier, taking on three teams in the top 12, or the Big 12 uh, in the top 20 here over the next few days. It's Clayton Chadwick will be in the box for the Bearcats. Chadwick doubled back in the second, came around to score. Just two down here, top of the third inning. Bearcats and Rice Owls. Brogdon with a little look over at first. Comes with a pitch. Curve ball. That one missed down low. Starting to see some action in that Rice bullpen. Four-man crew on the umpiring crew today. Joe Harris calling the balls and strikes. Wes Hamilton at first. Jason Millsap at second. And Michael Durantis at third. Fly ball lifted out into center field and on the run and making the grab out in center. And that will do it for the Bearcats. A nice catch there by Garibay as he chased it down. But the Cats put two more on the board. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning. Sam Houston leads it three to nothing here on the Bearcats Sports Network. If you needed major surgery, you probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and T.J. Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, T.J. Burdett & Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. T.J. Burdett & Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit T.J. Burdett & Sons on Facebook for more info. Back here at Minute Maid Park, we go to the bottom of the third inning. Bearcats leading the Rice Owls three to nothing. It'll be eight, nine, one in the Rice order. Long Hughes, and then back around for Dunlap. It's Tyler Davis back out on the hill for the Bearcats. Davis, two innings of work. He's allowed just one hit, one strikeout. Justin Long will be the hitter for the Owls. 3.33 average. Four hits and 12 at bats for Long. A couple of runs driven in. A 
Davis takes a look in, set and ready to go. First pitch, fly ball lifted out into right field, and there to make the grab is Facher. Ball was tailing towards him. Facher, Kowser had a few words after that one. I think the ball kind of came back on him. Facher was expecting it to be more in the gap, and it was tailing off of the right-handed bat of Long, and it kind of hooked right back into Facher, and he kind of had to reach back and make the catch. And Davis has retired five in a row. The only blip in this ball game was back in the first on that third batter. Hal Hughes will be the batter. First pitch in for a strike. Hughes, a junior out of Boston. 182 average this year. Lays off the curveball. Count evens up. One ball, one strike. The number nine hitter in the order. 1-1 one, one pitch from Davis. Curve ball, that one. Ooh, called a ball. Davis wanted it. Gavin Johnson wanted it. So the count goes to 2-1. and one. Davis set and ready to go. Pitch on the way. Ground ball down to third. Glove by Vines. Spin. Fire. Nice play over there at third. Corbin Vines. And there's two down here in the inning. Well, fancy footwork by Vines out there on the field work. Popped to him, had to rotate about 180 degrees and then darted it over to first. That's the way you do it for a two up, two down. And we'll go through the top of the order for Dunlap. Dunlap popped up his first time. Davis was the one who chased it down in foul territory. 333 average on the year for Dunlap. First pitch missed inside. Yeah, he was trying to see if he could get a, <laughs> get a base out of that. Kind of a half-hearted turn and like half-step towards first, like it might have caught his elbow going by, but certainly didn't do anything to try to sell it, so he'll yeah, he, stay in the box at 1-0. He was looking at the umpire, too, saying, will you let me go to first? Pitch on the way. That one goes out and away, and the count goes to 2-0. Got to be careful. Some umpires sometimes see that as maybe trying to show him up. It was like he thought he was going to go to first. He's like, no, nah, it wasn't close enough. Couldn't sell it. Pitch on the way. Misses down low, and the count goes to 3-0. and oh. yeah. he, may, he may get up first in the end anyway. Quick little 3-0 -oh here for Davis. Retired the first two hitters of the inning. He's gone 3-0 -oh to, to Dunlap here, top of the order. That one is in for a strike. Dunlap was taking all the way. Guy who's gotten on base a good bit. 467 on base percentage. A 1050 OPS. Ground ball down to third. It's going to kick foul. You remember Dunlap leading off in this ball game. Popped that one up over off the first baseline, and it was where Davis had to kind of make that come from behind grab for the first out. So from 3-0 to 3-2, full count pitch on the way to Dunlap. Swing and a miss. Davis gets the strikeout, and it's another 1-2-3 inning. Three in the books here at Minute Maid Park. Bearcats lead it 3 to nothing. This is Sam Houston Baseball on the Bearcats Sports Network. repair shops achieve ICAR gold class status, the highest training level recognized in the industry. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 is proud to be one of them. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. They invest in training because they would never cut corners with your family's safety at stake, and neither should you. Get your vehicle repaired at Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45, where your safety is their top priority. Eric Barbosa, General Manager at Henson Chevy Buick GMC, and we're letting the good deals roll during our parade of savings. We're rolling out 10 models with payments under $300 a month. We'll even throw in a big screen TV. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you, and we even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson Chevy, your dealer for life. All right, friends, welcome back. Rob Pip here as I'll have the four, five, and six. It is Sam Houston baseball at the beautiful Minute Maid Park here at Houston, Texas. Thanks so much for joining us 
here for this 21st annual Shiners Hospitals for Children College at Classic. A lot of teams, a lot of really good teams here throughout the Lone Star State. As we'll get started, Sam Houston leading three to zero. As we reset, we go back, or we go to the top of the fourth. Again here in Houston, Texas and leading off, we'll start with the seven, eight and nine. It is Jackson Lofton. Lofton, of course, this season had been leading off. He got bumped down to the seven hole. And Brogdon will remain on the mound. He gave up two runs on three hits in the prior inning. Jackson Lofton, the right-handed batter. Brogdon standing on the on the hill. Here's the delivery from the right hand. Is well, Lofton showing a little bit of early bunt here on this one, Jason. It goes across for a strike, 0-1. Yeah, get on any way you can right now for Lofton. Here's Brogdon with the next pitch. This one chopped over to third. It is Como. Como running it down the line, throws over to first, and that's one away here. So yeah, Lofton, we are. Lofton just kind of buried that one in the dirt right out in front of home plate. Big high hop for Como over at third. And it's tough going right now for Jackson Lofton. And when you get in a little slump like this, sometimes it's hard to get out of it. Well, the Cats as a team had been on a slump. Here's Corin, Corbin Vines. He chops this one over to short. Hughes fields it, throws to first, and we're two up, two down just like that. You know, I mentioned the Bearcats as a team, Jason, of course, had been in a hole, dropping three in a row. The team-wise has done their part tonight. Now can the individuals do it? Talking about Jackson Lofton, you mentioned that slump. Important for him to find some sort of rhythm as this early season continues. Yeah, and that's part of the move down in the batting order, you know, trying to take that pressure of being the leadoff guy, setting the table for Colton Kowser, and maybe take a little bit of that pressure off. Bottom of the order here to McKenzie, the first pitch, a fast one. You heard it pop into the catcher's glove. It was a ball, though, a little out of the reach, 1-0 the early count. Anthony McKenzie, 0 for 1 here this morning as he popped one up over to left back in the second. Next pitch on the way, identical to the first, and we've got a early 2-0 count here. And Anthony McKenzie is a left-handed batter, stands with that left foot down in the lower corner of the box. Here's the next delivery quickly in the windup. This time, it just painted that corner for a strike. Brings the count to two balls and one strike. McKenzie, a freshman, he's out of Houston. Played at Second Baptist High School. Lance Berkman was actually his high school coach. Here's the next delivery. This one popped way up into the air. Boy, that was close to the bottom of the rafters here at Minute Maid. This one may be caught in foul territory for the out, and it is. So a good job there by Rice making the way over. And we are three away. So a quick three up, three down. As the Cats put up two runs in the previous inning, not able to do much here. And Como over at third, able to make that out in foul territory. We'll step aside and take a break. Bottom of the fourth coming up when we come back on the Bearcat Sports Network. Opportunity. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North I 45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. Eric Barbosa, operating partner for Henson CDJR and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero store-wide with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDJR, your dealer for life. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip here, just two minutes shy of noon in Houston, Texas at Minute Maid Park at Sam Houston Baseball, part of this 21st annual Shriners Hospitals for Children's College Classic. Alongside my good friend Jason Barfield, the Bearcats leading 3-0. But back just in the previous on that offensive side, a quick three up and three down, and the Rice back at bat here as they will try to find something. Talking about Tyler Davis, remains on the mound for the Cats. He has retired seven in a row now after the little blip back in the first on the third batter. So that'll take us here for Rice to second in the order. I believe it is Cade 
Edwards, the left fielder. He was out back in the first. He popped one up over to center for the second out. As Davis will take a deep breath, right-handed delivery, a little too low, an early ball here. Boy, that was close. Yeah, important stretch here for Davis, second time through the order, going against 2-3-4 in the batting order. So these guys getting a second look at him, see what adjustments are made. Here's the next pitch on its way. This one too close to the inside, so an early two-ball, no-strike count here on Kate Edwards. Here the Rice dugout. You can hear some chattering out there. Trying to get something going with these bats. Davis with the delivery. This one right over center, just out of the reach of Lofton there. I beg your pardon, McKenzie at second, and that is a base hit. Yeah, the Bearcat shifted right before that pitch. McKenzie came over and lined up just behind the bag. He was probably one step too close to the shortstop side of the base and couldn't come up with the play. So that will put Edwards with the hit over at first, third in the order now. Como, he's one for one here this morning as he singled back in the first and was left stranded. Here's the pitch. High up for a ball, 1-0 early count. Second hit of the day for the Owls. Once again, the Bearcats are shifted over. A lot of room to work on that right side. This pitch may have got away from him a little bit as it curves too far to the outside. So another 2-0 count here to start on Como this time. Remember the previous batter, Edwards, who's over there at first, was in a 2-0 when he had that hit. Davis trying to relax here. The next pitch on the way. This one too close to the inside. Well, up until that hit moments ago, Davis had retired seven in a row. Now trying to avoid putting Edwards over at second in scoring position. The early count, 3-0. and oh. Here's the delivery. It's on its way. Got the corner for a strike, 3-1. and one. Yeah, Como taking all the way there on 3-0. Rice trying to build a little momentum here in the bottom of the fourth inning. You can hear the dugout chattering, trying to get a little extra life here with a runner aboard. Next pitch on the way. This one over to right. Facher tracking it down. The left-handed glove got it for the first out. Facher had to extend there. Those, some of those grabs, especially here, you talk about just the overall feeling of Minute Maid Park and just how monstrous it is. Nothing really comes easy here. You know, and the Bearcats may have a little bit of an advantage having already played up at Globe Life this year. Got a look, Major League Ballpark, similar backdrop to that one. And so they've they've seen a little bit about how it's going to play off the bat and what you know what it's going to be like. Here's Garibay, the batter now fourth in the order, cleaning up the left fielder, or center fielder rather. Had a he, brief little stoppage just now. I think a ball had kicked out onto the field. Chadwick had to go over and retrieve it and toss it back into the seats. Here's the pitch to Garibay, swung on and missed. Took a hard swing there and a good off-speed pitch there by Tyler Davis. That was a big first out to get there. You give up a single and then go 3-0 in the count. Rice starting to feel a little bit of life. Pickoff attempt, keeping that runner honest at first is safe as Davis threw it over to Rogers. Again, resting over at first is Edwards. For Rice, they're trailing three to zero. Bottom of this fourth inning. Here's the pitch on the way to the outside. It got a little bit away from Johnson. He was able to stay behind it, luckily. Saw a lot of that on Sunday in the final of the three-game series where pitches kind of hopping around back there and Johnson able to stay behind him. Yeah, Johnson, the guy, he's going to bounce around back there. He's he's a pitcher's best friend for sure. Does a good job handling the staff behind the dish. Doesn't let a lot get past him. Ace is on the board. Here's the pitch on the way. This one. Ooh. Oh, man, that was called a ball. So close on that one, Jason. Yeah, I think Johnson might have turned around and just had a little question about where it might have been. Pulled the mask back, took a look back. 
Davis with a 2-1 delivery. This one chopped foul off the first baseline. It'll bounce into the dugout of the Rice Owls. That may have been the first foul that we've seen so far this morning or this afternoon now that has bounced into a dugout. Evens up the count at two balls and two strikes. Again, one away here in the bottom of the fourth. Rice trailing three to zero. Got Edwards over at first, who had that leadoff here in the fourth. It was on a 2-0 count. Two balls, two strikes on this one here to Garvey. This one hit over hard to right. We'll see if this one drops out of here. It does. Two-run homer for Guy Garibay as he hit that one over to right. Dropped just over the fence. And Rice with some life here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, he was fired up on that one. That went about three rows deep out into right field. And as he came around first, he kind of had about three leaps and a fist pump. A little one-out home run here brings Rice to within one run. Trailing three to two. Fifth in the order, it is Bradley Knighting, the first pitch on the way here, and that one a strike, called strike. Davis taking his time, just trying to settle back in. Here's his right-handed pitch, a little inchworm as it goes too close on the inside for a ball, one and one. Be interesting to see the response by Davis here now after giving up that home run. Can he settle in and finish it up and just leave it at the two runs this inning? Here's the next fastball across the plate for a strike. One and two on one out. Important not to let that one hit turn into much more. Knighting with eight hits and four runs this season, seven RBIs, swung and missed here, a little Foul tip, actually, so it will remain one and two. Davis with his pitch on the way. This time swung on and missed. Two away here. It's a strikeout for Tyler Davis as he struggled a little bit here in the fourth after retiring seven in a row. Jason, you just mentioned how is he going to respond, responding nicely there against Knighting. Yeah, it took a little something off of it. Knighting got out in front, wasn't able to catch up. Here's the pitch on the way to Austin Bullman, and this one a strike. It's called strike here, 0-1 count on Bullman. Four pitches and in a row here for Davis as he's starting to regain his rhythm. And just as I said that, though, a little too far to the outside for a ball one and one. Again, want to welcome you into the broadcast. Rob Hip alongside Jason Barfield. It's three to two. Sam Houston leading there on the defensive side. Davis on the mound. Here's his delivery. This time across. Boy, a little bit of an off speed in a way there. And it's called strike. One ball and two strikes. Davis back in rhythm. Too far to the outside to even the count at two and two with two outs. Davis takes a deep breath. Here's his right-handed pitch. This one up under and easily making the grab is McKenzie over at second on the pop-up. Well, the Bearcats give up a two-run homer, but still hold on to a one-run lead, three to two. As we make our way to the top of the fifth, we'll be back in a moment. This is Sam Houston Men's Baseball on the Bearcats Sports Network. Eric Wolf is the general manager at Henson Ford, and we're letting our good deals roll during our parade of savings. We'll match your tax refund up to $2,500 on any new Ford truck like a 2021 F-150 Super Group. That's up to $5,000 to use as a down payment. 
Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We'll even deliver your vehicle for free. Rolling out big savings today only at Henson Ford, your dealer for life. They don't build cars like they used to, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip alongside Jason Barfield. We're live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Bearcats leading by one. It's three to two facing uh, the Rice Owls. Bearcats will go back to the offensive side of things as we start the top of this fifth inning. Again, thanks for joining us here this afternoon. This game got started a little bit earlier in the morning, an 11 a.m. first pitch. We're now just about 10 minutes after lunchtime here in southeast Texas. As we'll go back to the top of the order here for Sam Houston's Colton Kowser. Kowser, one for two. So he had a stand-up double back in the third and was eventually able to come around and score. Here's a first pitch, a little too high up into the outside for an early ball here on Colton Kowser. That's the part of the order that got it going for the Bearcats in the third. The leadoff double by Kowser sparked a two-run inning. Here's the 1-0. A little too low as it bounces around. Two balls, no strikes. Again, Kowser making the switch as up to the first in the order for Jackson Lofton, who was bumped back down to seven. Kowser making the most of it so far here today. Here's the next pitch on its way on a 2-0. This time it clipped a corner of the plate for a strike at two balls and one strike. Jason, you mentioned earlier you've been to, what, about 100 games over here over the years at Minute Maid? Easily. This one chopped right up over center, rolled right past Brogdon, rolled up center outside the dirt, and that is a base hit for Colton Kowser. Nice single there by Kowser. He's having a good good day so far. Two of three now. Yeah, halfway to the cycle. He's got the single and the double out of the way. This is the kind of ballpark where you can get you a triple if you get it to roll to the wall. And we certainly know he's got the home run power. Take us a second in the order. The designated hitter, Christian Smith. Smith won for two here this morning. Back to a right-handed batter as Brogdon on the mound. Takes a breath, kicks up his left leg. Runner will take off over to second. He's there, rounding over to third, and runners at the corner for Sam Houston. Boy, Rob, they say baseball is a game of inches, and that certainly was the case there. Colton Kowser off and running, hit and run on. Carp, the second baseman, he was coming over to cover the bag, and he was just late getting there on the line drive. What would have been a double play now has runners at the corners and nobody out for the Bearcats. Cows are able to advance over to third. He'll rest in that hot corner. And over at first is Christian Smith. So to start things here in the top of the fifth, the Bearcats with runners on one and three. Going to have a little bit of a discussion here on the mound. We do see a little bit of activity in the bullpen. I don't think anybody's coming out now, but Long, the catcher, wanting to talk things over with his pitcher, Brogdon, out there on top of the hill. Yeah, but just talking about this ballpark, you ask, I've probably, you know, seen 70, 80 Astros games over the years and probably 20, 30 college baseball games over the years played here. Um, it's a great ballpark. Of course, I saw tons of games in the Astrodome before that. Coaching staff, one of the coaches making their way up to the mound too just to try to settle down Brogdon. I don't think we're going to see a pitching change yet. I was going to mention, you know, you may have an honorary nameplate somewhere here at Minute Maid, Jason, with all those games you've been to. It's, it's got to be somewhere. There's been a ton of baseball that I've seen played here, postseason games as well. I was here for game number one. Saw the first game against the Phillies, first regular season game. Saw game – saw that you – Preseason game against the Yankees. Saw the opening day, the home opener against the Phillies to open up the ballpark. That was 
2000 is when this opened. That was my senior year at Sam Houston. We were driving down for baseball a lot. Crazy to imagine how fast time flies. You said 2021 years later, and still the park just looks sparkling brand new. They've done a lot to it over the years. Third in the order for the Bearcats, it is Jack Rogers. Rogers is one for two this afternoon now. The first pitch on the way is a ball, 1-0. Oh. Brogdon had a little chat there with his catcher, Long, who came up. Coach also came over and talked to him. They had a little bit of an extended discussion as the umpire made his way up there and said, all right, guys, let's get back to baseball. Early count here, 1-0 oh on Jack Rogers. Bearcats leading 3-2 here in the top of the fifth. Here's the right-handed del delivery and swung on, chopped foul off the first base line. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Rodgers this year, four doubles now after that double back in the third inning. He's got nine hits and 20 at-bats. He's doubled four times and had a homer. Had three, homer, or three doubles in the Friday night game against UTSA. Here's the pitch. To the outside. Two balls and one strike. So he doubles on Fridays. All four doubles have come in the Friday ball games this year. Let's change that rhythm up. Well, yeah. Well, it is Friday. Let's keep it going. Yeah, yeah. let's keep it going. Pick attempt over at first. That base runner is safe. Again, Christian Smith, who singled earlier. That allowed Kowser to advance over to third. He remains safe. So runners on those corners for the Bearcats, leading 3-2 to two here in the top of the fifth. Thanks for joining us for Minute Maid. Something the Bearcats have always been good at is answering back when runs are scored. That opportunity here. Brogdon again with a pick attempt. Well, he's letting Smith know he's got an eye on him over there at first. They've got it nice and cool here in Minute Maid today as well. It's a... You, with the way how open it is and the, and the windows, and of course, out over at left, you feel like you're in an outdoor park. Here's the next pitch. Swung on and missed. Good pitch there by Brogdon to even the count at two balls and two strikes. Jason, I went to sleep last night. I was listening to a lot of classic radio calls on YouTube. You can go on YouTube and search for them from back in the 60s, I mean, they go all, even all the way back to the 30s. Who do you like to listen to? I was just listening to Rand. I put it on a playlist. I can give me some Vin Scully or some Ernie Harwell. Here's the 2-2 two -two to the outside. Vin Scully, of course, is just classic. Ernie Harwell, though, longtime broadcaster of the Detroit Tigers, one of my favorites to go back and listen to his stuff. That's who I was listening to last night, and... I think I even had a dream about baseball. I don't remember my dreams too much anymore, though. Here's the 3-2 payoff on the way to low. And Rodgers will reach on the walk. And we've got bases loaded for the first time today. The Bearcats looking good with no outs here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, this is a situation, Rob, we saw on Sunday in the first inning. The Bearcats loaded them 1-2-3 in the order, loaded the bases, nobody out. And they couldn't get that run home. And I really think that set the tone for the rest of the – and uh, just turned out to a bad, be a bad day for the Bearcats. I'm cleaning up here is Blake Facher, and that the four, five, and six, two of those batters have had hits here today. Facher, though, 0 for 2. When I say 0 for 2, you're due. Here's the pitch on the way to the right-handed batter. Swung on and missed. 1-1 One -one early count here. Facher trying to find his rhythm here today. He popped up over to center back in the first for the third out and then grounded over to third for the second out back in the third. Bearcats leading 3-2, bases loaded, no outs here in the top of the fifth. Brogdon with the windup and the delivery, chopped over foul off the third baseline. 0-2 here now for Blake Fager. Fager, a junior out of guess where? Cyprus. Cyprus. You don't even have to look anymore. We know. <laughs> Seven Bearcats on this roster from Cyprus as Shane Wedd, third base coach for the Bearcats. We'll have a chat with Facher. But Seven guys from Cyprus on this team. Talk about just the recruiting hotbed. Of course, Rice very well aware of that as well. They come up this way and 
take some guys. We look at Cypress Spring, the Woodlands, so much great baseball that's played there. 13 Bearcats from that little triangle of Spring Cypress, the Woodlands. I was trying to think of what we could call that, like the baseball Bermuda Triangle, but the problem is in the, the Bermuda Triangle, you get lost. That's, These guys aren't lost. That's a negative connotation. <laughs> yeah, they're finding their way here to Huntsville. And the Bearcats this time looked at it for the third and final strike, and we are now one away. So Fatra looked at that one. It went across the plate. Brogdon got it across, and we are one away here with bases remain loaded. Yeah, good-looking curveball there. Started coming towards Fager, broke across late. I think he felt like that was going to hang inside, but a lot of late from Brogdon and a big first out. Fifth in the order, it's the catcher, Gavin Johnson, who is one for two. And I think we're going to have a pitching change here, Jason. So all the infield will come in, everyone coming in to the mound except for the outfield, of course, and we're going to have a pitching change. We'll step aside and take a break. We'll be back in a minute. We'll have that pitching change for you and more. Stay with us. This is Bearcat Baseball. Sam Houston leading 3-2, to two, one away here in the top of the fifth. and Chevy Buick GMC, and we're letting the good deals roll during our parade of savings. We're rolling out 10 models with payments under $300 a month. We'll even throw in a big screen TV. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you, and we even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson Chevy, your dealer for life. If you needed major surgery, you probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip alongside Jason Barfield here from Minute Maid in Houston, Texas. Sam Houston baseball this afternoon started at 11 a.m. Bearcats leading 3-2. to two. Bases are loaded. We're one out here. And we do have a pitching change out on the field for Rice. It is Brandon Deskins. He is entering this contest at 3.86 ERA. It's a lefty. 0-1 yeah. this season. Seven innings pitch. He's allowed... Three runs on seven hits, walked four, struck out six. Also allowed a triple and a home run. Six foot one, 183 pounds. He's a sophomore out of Friendswood. Last appeared oh, two days ago against Prairie View. Worked an inning and two thirds in his last outing, gave up two hits, had a walk and a strikeout. That was a 10 nothing Rice win. So he comes into a tough spot here. Bases loaded, one out. And he's going to have really the middle of the Bearcat order. Five, six, seven. Gavin Johnson, Clayton Chadwick, he's got to work his way through. And this is a big spot for the Bearcats. You had the three-run lead. You gave up two. You've got a chance to answer back. Got to take advantage of this situation. We'll see what they can do here. The Bearcats, as you just said, they've absolutely, they've done it already this season where they've left three on. Let's change the luck here a little bit. They've left bases loaded, haven't been able to capitalize. They're going to do it here. I have a feeling we're going to be positive. Here's the pitch on the way. This one curved to the outside on Gavin Johnson. One ball, no strikes, one away. Bases loaded for the Bearcats here in the top of this fifth. Johnson with a single already today. He also had a hit on Tuesday night at Baylor. Was one for three in that game. Deskins, the lefty, with the pitch on the way. Again, too far to the outside, 2-0 count. You got a chance to be up there in Baylor. What'd you think of that ballpark? Loved it. You know, as a, I'm a big Baylor fan too, and I've never been to Baylor ballpark, and that was a beautiful facility. You know, many years ago, within the last decade, it was at one point one of the top three ballparks in the college world and of course there's been a lot of upgrades to parks around but it's still a very beautiful facility 
This one hit over to left. Will it drop? It is on its way. Not able to make the grab. That should score two. Bearcats coming around. Two coming in. Runners over two, two, and three. Diving in time. How about that for Gavin Johnson? As he brought in two on the double. And yeah, that's a big base knock there by Gavin Johnson. He went the other way with it. Edwards on the run. I thought he had a beat on it. I thought Edwards was going to get there, and at the last minute it just dropped under the glove, rolled all the way to the wall there in the front of the Crawford boxes, allowed two runs to score. That's a big base knock after giving up the two-run homer last half inning to get two back and then a chance to pile more on with Chadwick now. Gavin Johnson now two for three, none bigger than that one just moments ago. With the double bringing in two and now brings up Sixth in the order, the left fielder, Clayton Chadwick, who bit on that one for a strike. Chadwick is one for two. Check down to first. They said he did go around. Bearcats with a three-run advantage, five to two here in the top of the fifth. Runners on second and third. The next pitch swung on and missed by Chadwick. That is Rogers over at third. He reached on a walk, came around on third by that hit by Gavin Johnson. Johnson bringing in two, cooking the steaks tonight. Boy, the Bearcats are hungry. Rice now bringing the infield in with two strikes. Going to play even with the grass with one out here. 0-2 oh the count, one away. Here's the delivery. Boy, got him looking. Thought that one may have been a little too high on the inside. I think that's the same eye that... Chadwick had, but they called it a strike as he looked at it for the yeah. second out. I thought that was up and in. That's a tough. That's tough. Because there's not a whole lot Chadwick can do with that pitch. Brings up Jackson Lofton. We talked about him with his struggles this season. He moved from the top of the order down to the seven hole. He is 0 for 2, struck out swinging back in the second for the second out, and then grounded one over to third for the first out back in the fourth. So this is a good opportunity for Lofton to build a little confidence. He'll place a bunt. Goes just to the right of the pitcher, able to hold it down, actually, and Deskins was able to grab that one and threw him out over at first. The Bearcats, though, a little bit more damage here, finding some separation, a little bit of insurance here, leading 5-2 to two as we are through 4.5, bottom of the fifth coming up. Stay with us, friends. This is the Bearcats Sports Network. probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. All right, friends, welcome back. We're having fun here today in Houston, Texas. I'm Rob Hipp alongside Jason Barfield. Johnson back in the top of that fifth inning, a two RBI double to bring home Kowser and Smith, extending the Bearcat lead five to two. Rice back at it here, and we'll see what the response is. As Sam Houston showing out on the offensive side, and we're about to get things started here in the bottom of this fifth inning. Been a fun one so far, Jason. Yeah, Tyler Davis back out on the hill for the Bearcats here in the bottom of the fifth inning. You know, they're not keeping pitch count here today, so I don't know what he's at in terms of pitches. He's faced 15 batters. So the 7, 8, and 9 we are here for Rice. It is Will Carp who is 0 for 1. He struck out looking for the third out back in the second. Right-handed batter with his second at bat or his set is one at bat so far here tonight. Second plate appearance. Here is the pitch on the way. This one 
Boy, a leadoff single here to start things in the bottom of this fifth as he laced it over to left. Yeah, struck out his last time looking. Didn't hesitate to get the bat off the shoulder here in this at-bat. Goes after the first pitch and lined it into left field for a single. Another leadoff runner aboard for the Owls. Last time they turned it into two runs. Bring up eighth in the order. It's the catcher, Justin Long. He popped one up over to right for the first out back in the third. Long, a freshman out of Kingwood. Here's the delivery from the right hand. The curveball got the corner for a strike. How about that? 0-1. Nice little off-speed there by Davis. Runner on first again is Carp, who had the leadoff single just a few moments ago. Here's the next delivery. This time again, it's almost an identical pitch. Got that corner for another strike to bring it to 0-2. Long out of a good baseball program there at Kingwood High School. That's close to the triangle. 0-2, advancing over to second. Is that ball down? And runners over there at second now. Was yeah. able to, still over. Unfortunate bounce there. Johnson was able to smother it. It kicked off the glove, and it hit the foot of Long and kind of drifted away from where Johnson was able to scoop, and he had no play down at second. So a wild pitch officially scored. will advance Carp over to second. It was already taken off a little bit, but his confidence was soaring as that wild pitch. He saw it, took off to second. The count here at one and two. As Long stepped away just for a moment, called time. Now he's back into that right-handed batter's box. Davis on the mound. No outs. Rice trailing five to two at bat here in the bottom of the fifth. The delivery, this one swung on, hit foul to the back of the net. The battle starting here. The count remains one and two. A little bit of activity now in the Bearcat bullpen. Nobody up and throwing, just some guys getting up and starting to loosen a little bit. Some stretching going on down there and some light tossing. It's 362 out there at left center. The corner's at 315. Straight away is 409, and the power alley there at left is 404. The right power alley at 373. Next one here is another ball, so two and two the count. Once again, Johnson having to get behind that one. That's Steven Beard who is up and working for the Bearcats, the sophomore out of the Woodlands. Well, again, we're here in the 21st annual Shriners Hospitals for Children College Classic. And another pitch here. They're going to have a discussion now as Johnson will talk to Davis. Yeah, I think with a runner down at second, Johnson just wants to make sure they're on the same page. Changing the signs up a little bit. Don't want to make a mistake. A little unique field here to the Shriners Hospitals for Children College Classic. It marks just the fourth time for the tournament to host all Texas team. That happened in 2001, 14, and then back in 2019. Boy, I hate saying years that seem so close and saying back in because 2019 was so yesterday. Here's the next pitch. This one, chop foul. Bearcats were part of that 2014 field. They beat TCU on Friday, knocked off Texas Tech in the Saturday game, and then dropped a close one to Texas on Sunday. Of course, up until this year, Corpus Christi was a late add to this tournament, but up until this year, the Bearcats are the only Southland team who's appeared in this tournament. Corpus, when they play today, will be the second Southland team to play here. Still 2-2, bottom of the fifth, no outs. Runner on second for Rice. After the wild pitch just moments ago. Rice trailing 5-2. Here's the pitch. This one hit hard over to right up into the air. We'll see if it drops foul. It is uncatchable there in foul territory. Just a little too, could have hung up in the air for maybe another couple of seconds and it would have been catchable in foul territory. Good effort out there by the first baseman, Rogers, but it just dropped a little too fast in front of him. Yeah, a lot of foul territory here until it juts out right towards the end as it gets out into right field, same over on the left-hand side. 
You mentioned A&M Corpus. They were a late add to this tournament, making their first appearance in this college classic. Here's the next pitch. This one over to right. We'll see if Facher can get under it. Puts up his left glove, and he does. Runner's going to take off, trying to get to third, and he was able to get there in plenty of time. So Carp will advance over to third, and Long is out on the pop-up over to right field to Facher. But a productive at-bat there. He was able to get the ball in the air, advance the runner over two-thirds. So they take advantage of the wild pitch, and they've now got a runner 90 feet away. So we're one away here. Carp over at third. Bottom of the order we are. It's Hal Hughes. He's 0 for 1 as he grounded one over to third. Back for the second out in the third. The first pitch on the way to him is a ball. 1-0 and early count. And Davis early on was doing a good job of getting ahead of the hitters. A couple of first pitch balls here in this inning, however. Davis with his right-handed delivery. The curveball got the corner of the plate for a strike. Evens the count, aces across the board. Yeah, and that's where he's been good, has been with that curveball. He's done a good job of spotting it, getting in a location that he likes. On deck is Justin Dunlap. He is 0 for 2. We'll go back to the top of the order on the next batter here for Rice. Davis with his delivery. This one got up under. Will it drop to center? Kowser has the grab. Runner's going to try to come home and score. Did he get there in time? No, he did not. The Bearcats get him as he was trying to come home. How about it? There for Sam Houston. Two outs. That'll do it. Colton Kowser showing why he is one of the top prospects in college baseball. It's not because of what he does with the bat necessarily, what he does in every aspect of the game. That one in fielding, a great jump to get on the ball and then the throw to the plate on the mark. Colton Kowser, great play. Beautiful play just moments ago. A nice double play to end the bottom of the fifth inning. It was three up, three down, but it took, it wasn't easy as uh, Bearcats with a three run advantage. We'll step aside and take a break here. We'll be back in a moment. Top of the six coming up on the Bearcat Sports Network. CDGR, and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero store-wide with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDGR, your dealer for life. If you needed major surgery, you probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. Only 15% of collision repair shops achieve ICAR Gold Class status, the highest training level recognized in the industry. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 is proud to be one of them. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. They invest in training because they would never cut corners with your family's safety at stake, and neither should you. Get your vehicle repaired at Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45, where your safety is their top priority. Welcome back. The previous play is under review as, as it was called originally a double play. It was an out as Kowser, and Jason was mentioning Kowser, throwing all the way from center down to the catcher Johnson as Carp was trying to come home. We've got a big screen up there, Jason. What did it look like to you, man? I think they got him. I think the, the glove comes in. It's a matter of where did his toe get a toe tap on the plate as he slid by. It looked like the tag may have come up on the thigh. The, show, the shot that they're showing us on the video board right now is from center field. 
you really need to see the shot from behind yeah. home plate to see where that tag is. Can't see it on the replay there because it was up front. Maybe a better angle here as we're looking at it on the video, and the umpire's kind of in the way on that one. Yeah, he's going to screen it, and I don't think they're going to have Ooh. a good look, but it does look like the tag came in. Maya got him just on the hip. It's pretty rare that you have multiple angles and, mo and both of them are obstructed. <laughs> they're, they're taking a long look. Yeah, They've been looking at long. this since the start of the inning. So here comes the umpire. They will make the official ruling, and it is out. So the play will stand. It is a double play. And after review, that play will stand as called. A double play for the Bearcats on the defensive side. Throwing out Carp. It was Kowser lunging one all the way down to Johnson, the catcher, as Carp was trying to come in and get home. And that is where it stands. We're going to go ahead and step aside. We'll take another 30-second break. When we come back, we'll have the top of the sixth inning. Bearcats leading 5-2 to two here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Henson Chevy Buick GMC, and we're letting the good deals roll during our parade of savings. We're rolling out 10 models with payments under $300 a month. We'll even throw in a big screen TV. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you, and we even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson Chevy, your dealer for life. Pleasant good afternoon. Welcome back, friends. 12.40 time on the clock here in Houston, Texas. I'm Rob Hipp alongside Jason Barfield. Thank you for joining us for this 21st Annual Shriners Hospital for Children's College Classic here at Minute Maid in Houston, Texas. It's Sam Houston battling Rice, the Cats, with a 5-2 lead. Again, as we start the top of the sixth inning, and leading off in this sixth will be eighth in the order, the third baseman, Corbin Vines, who had a RBI single back in the second to really start the early rally for the Bearcats. Deskins remains on the mound as the left-handed pitcher for Rice. His delivery on the way, high into the outside, an early one ball, no strike, no out count to start the sixth. Appreciate you joining us. Have some comments coming in on our in the booth feed, here's the next delivery to the out. No, oh, that was a little bit of a late call there. Called a strike as it may have got the outside corner for the strike, one and one. Stephen Reed joining us, saying sounding great. Good to see you this morning, my wonderful mother. Uh, watching back outside of Austin and Georgetown, or listening, saying watching uh, from Georgetown, go Cats. Here's the next pitch. The off speed here got the corner again, so one ball and two strikes. Jason, my 93-year-old grandmother, is with my mom. She listens to us, so I want to say hello to her as well. They put the phone in the, on the kitchen table, and they listen to the Bearcats. Basketball, baseball, football, they're becoming kind of distant cat fans. I like it. Here's the one, two. And this one called a ball here to even the count at two and two. Boy, Vines thought about biting at it, and he pulled back just in the nick of time. So an even count here, two balls, two strikes, no outs, nobody on, top of the sixth we are. Bearcats leading. Here's Deskins with the pitch. Too close to the inside. Good eye right there by Vines. Brings us to a full count, three and two. Deskin's taking quite a bit of time here with no runners on. Here's the payoff pitch. This one chopped over to Hughes at short, making the lunge and able to beat it out in plenty of time. That's a base hit on a 3-2 count by Corbin Vines. Yeah, good play defensively there by Hughes, but that ball was hit deep in the hole. It had taken something quite spectacular to be able to get Vines. A little leadoff single here, Corbin Vines. Having a nice game here today. Now two of three takes us to the bottom of the order. It's the second baseman, Anthony McKenzie. McKenzie is 0 for 2. So he popped one foul. It was caught out in foul territory off 
the third base back in the fourth. Wouldn't be surprised to see him put down a bunt here and see if he can move that runner up. Deskin's taking his time. Now the left-handed pitch to the outside as it popped into the catcher's glove for a ball. 1-0 count. Cats, nice little turnaround game here after the three-game skid. They've got ten hits, five runs on those. They've left five on so far today, but a much better offensive output. Here's the next delivery. High into the outside again, 2-0. Carp at second base playing well over towards the bag. Giving a lot of room on the right side of the infield for McKenzie to work with. Deskins on the mound here for Rice. Again, he takes quite a bit of time in between pitches here. He's definitely a patient pitcher. Here's his delivery. I call it the inchworm too close to the inside, 3-0. and Of course, Deskins coming in for... Blake Brogdon, who pitched four and a third innings, he allowed three runs on eight hits. And there may have been more runs on that. I don't, I'll have to go back and check that, Jason. He was responsible for the three that were left on. Here's the next pitch. This one got the corner looking at it for the first strike of this at bat, three and one. Yeah, get over fastball there, just looking to see if you can put something over the plate. Don't want to walk McKenzie on four straight pitches. Even if you're Anthony McKenzie here at three and one, you're not chasing anything. It's got to be something right down the heart. Here's the next pitch. Boy, hit hard over to left. This one is going deep. Back out, and this one is gone. Well over 362. It's a two-run homer for the Bearcats. They're extending their lead. The Cats coming alive here in Houston, Texas. Oh, I'd say McKenzie saw something that he liked. Fastball out over the middle, and he took a rip at it. Put it out over the railing. If you're familiar with Minute Maid Park, you've got the, the railing out there just to the right of the Crawford boxes. He put it up on the ad panel above that opening there on the concourse. Yeah, you mentioned I wouldn't be surprised if we see some to the Crawford boxes. And Jason? What you're speaking is truth, man. So keep speaking that here today. Well, that he got all of that one. That was a that was a big league homer there. There was that was not a cheap Crawford box home run. <laughs> You'll see sometimes guys drop them in the front row of that Crawford box that wouldn't be out of any other ballpark. McKenzie didn't get cheated there. Go back to the top of the order, Colton Cowsers, who having an excellent game as well. He is two for threes. Scored his previous, or able to come around and score runs on his previous two at-bats. Left-handed batter here, averages 318 on the season. Here's the delivery. Left-handed pitcher to the left-handed batter. This one a strike. Early count here, 0-2. Cats leading 7-2 in this one. Deskins with a left-handed pitch. Blowing in the dirt, Long was able to get behind it. One-two count. Yeah, he couldn't get Kowser to chase there. Ty Gibson joining us, former Sam Houston alumni. He's the owner of Waterboy Graphics, Minuteman Press. They serve a lot of collegiate programs with banners and advertising. Appreciate you, Ty. Here's the next delivery. Too close to the inside. Two and two. Good take there by Kowser, showing a lot of patience at the plate. Not trying to chase anything. Also joining us, Joshua Harris, saying the Cats are on fire. Appreciate you, Josh. Josh had the call with me in Baylor just a few nights ago at the Oak Ridge Disciple House. Here's the 2-2. Curve ball, but it's too low to bring it to a full count at 3-2. and two. Good at bat here from Kowser. Got down in the count 0-2, and, and he has taken three Pretty good pitches that have just been nibbling around the zone, and he's been able to lay off. They're going to come. have to come out here and re-chalk those boxes down there as they're all dusted up. Here's the payoff to the outside, walked him. So Colton Kowser hangs on on a payoff pitch, and he'll reach on a walk. Yeah, really good at-bat there by Kowser, showing a lot of patience. 
You get down in the count 0 and 2, sometimes you expand the zone a little bit. You start to press some. And Kowser stayed patient and watched four balls. We go second to the order. It's the designated hitter, Christian Smith. Boy, all these cats, I keep saying, you know, having a good day today. Two for three. Back to a right-handed batter. Pick attempt. That one's thrown by air to the pitcher as he threw it way off first. Runner's going to come around over to third. Way off first. Runner's going to come around over to third. So on an error by Deskins, he was trying to pick off over at first. And Kowser took off to the races, rounded second and over at third. That ball got way out there off the first base line. Yeah, Kowser wasn't more than like a step off the bag. It was kind of a casual lead. He, he really hadn't even started to do anything over there. And then the throw, I mean, he didn't have to even get back to the bag. It was like one step back to the bag. And just kind of a casual throw sailed on Deskins there, and Kowser's able to go first to third because of all that foul territory we talked about. Now Rice has to bring the infield in. It's the first error of this ball game by any team, either team. Next pitch on the way here to Christian Smith, or the first pitch to Christian Smith. No balls and one strike here on Christian Smith. He is two for three today. Deskins will take a deep breath. Here's his left-handed delivery. High to the outside to even the count at one ball and one strike. Tried to go to the same spot, just a little far out there. Harvey Vanacek joining us on the Bearcat fan text line saying, go Bearcats, back in Huntsville. Appreciate you, Harvey. We'll get to that number here in a minute. If you're listening, we'd love to hear from you. Here's the 1-1. This one swung on, hit foul hard into the net just above the Rice dugout. The count at one and two. Again, that fan text line, if you'd like to let us know where you're listening from, maybe you've got a shout out, you can text us at 512-522-9105. Again, the Bearcat fan text line. Don't text and drive, data rates may apply. You can text us at 512-522-9105. Bearcats leading seven to two. At bat here are the Cats, one and two count. Runner on third is Kowser. This one, another hard hit foul over to the third base side off the net. Nets now fully extended here at Minute Maid Park all the way down the line. Those used to stop where, at the dugout? Oh, back in when they first started, they didn't even, yeah, front of the dugout. It was just a home plate net. Wow. These extensions now go all the way down the line to the corners. The one-two delivery too close to the inside. It was way too close in there, and Christian Smith finds himself in a nice 2-2 count with no outs. Bearcats leading 7-2. Scoring runs in the second, third, fifth, and sixth. Here's the next pitch. This one chopped over to short. Opportunity over to first. Runner's not going to take off to third, so there was no opportunity there. Uh, for Hughes on a double play as it rolled right to him. So a ground out to short for the first out there on Christian Smith. Yeah, Smith hit it hard, but Rice had the infield drawn in. So there was no opportunity for Kowser to come home. Kowser had to stay put over at third. That's why you bring the infield in to try to keep that runner standing over there at third base. But that's still only the first out. So they're going to have to keep the infield in again for Jack Rogers. One away, top of the six, 7-2, Cats leading. Third in the order, Jack Rogers. He is one for two. First pitch to him is a strike, 0-1. Reached on a walk back in the fifth, came around to the third and was left stranded in that inning. He did have that stand-up double, though, back in the third. And eventually came around and scored. Here's the next pitch. Got the outside Ooh. corner, barely got that corner. Ooh. So a quick 0-2 count here, one away in the top of the sixth. I thought there for a minute, Jason, when you know I was going to be calling these 4, 5, and 6 as you're doing the first, second, and third, and 7, 8, and 9, I thought maybe I was jinxing it. I was about to turn it back over to you for a little bit. You got a couple good innings under <laughs> your belt here. 
Here's the next pitch on the way. This one popped way up over to left center. We'll see actually the shortstop able to make the grab was Hughes. So we're two away. It would be nice for some more insurance. Cats with a nice buffer here by five. Kowser, though, at third, would surely like to bring him in. Yeah, Deskin's not out of the woods yet, but two big outs there to get Smith and Rogers with Colton Kowser standing down at third. And we've got Blake Facher, the right fielder now, cleaning up fourth in the order. Well, I say when you're 0 for 2, you're due. How about when you're 0 for 3, it's time to be. Be a nice little hit here. A hit would surely score, of course, for the Cats. Two outs we are as Kowser remains over at third. The first pitch on the way to Facher, a ball, 1-0. Up in the zone, Facher got the bat off the shoulder, but a good take. Facher 0 for 3 today, one of two Bearcats in the batting order without a hit. It's just him and Jackson Lofton now. Everybody else with a base knock today. 11 for the game for the Bearcats. Fager struck out looking back in the fifth. Here's a left-handed pitch. Swung on hard and missed. Boy, got him to bite on that one. and That's a lot of power behind that bat for a miss. If that connects, that's a loud pop. One and one. Yeah, it was a curve ball, and Fager was way out in front of it. Sam Houston making their third appearance here at Minute Man Park. Head coach Jay Sirianni named the position, of course, in 2019. Been part of the Bearcats staff in their recent run of excellence, including the Southland Conference regular season titles in 16, 18, and 19, a berth in the NCAA Super Regionals in 2017. Here's the next pitch. Swung on here and missed to bring the count to one and two. You were on that call of that one, Jason. That's on your Twitter, I believe. Is that the one? That is the one. That was the last out of the regional. Nick Mikulacic with the strikeout. Beat Texas Tech. Tomorrow's game against Texas Tech will be the first time those two teams have faced since that game. Sam Houston 7-7 seven and seven in 2020 at the time of the COVID pandemic shutdown. Here's the next pitch. Swung on and missed, and that'll do it. But not before. More damage done by the Baylor. Oh, the Baylor. I am got confused. The Bearcat bats. Don't want to get confused there, Jason. Two runs scored in this inning for Sam Houston. We'll step aside and take a break. Bottom of the six coming up on the Bearcat Sports Network. probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. Eric Barbosa, general manager at Henson Ford, and we're letting our good deals roll during our parade of savings. We'll match your tax refund up to $2,500 on any new Ford truck like a 2021 F-150 Super Group. That's up to $5,000 to use as a down payment. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We'll even deliver your vehicle for free. Rolling out big savings today only at Henson Ford, your dealer for life. Welcome back. We are approaching 1 p.m. Central here in Houston, Texas, live from Minute Maid Park. I'm Rob Hip, alongside my good friend Jason Barfield for Sam Houston Baseball. Bearcats leading this contest 7-2. Nice little rebound here, but we still got some still got some game remaining here as we're only in the bottom of this sixth inning. Davis remains on the mound. The first pitch on the way, leading off back at the top of the order, Justin Dunlap. And the first one called a strike, 0-1 Dunlap. 
0 for 2 here so far today as he popped one up right over to the mound at the pitcher in the first for the first out, then struck out swinging in the third for the third and final out of that inning. The next pitch on its way and called a strike as well. Two beautiful pitches here by Davis to start this. Third time through the order now for Davis to see these rice out, so we'll see what adjustments each side makes here. Davis, the glove in front of his face. Now the wind up and the right-handed delivery. Swung on and missed. Three pitches, three strikes, one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, Davis just came right after him there. Fastball, no chance. Second in the order, the left fielder, Cade Edwards. Cade Edwards one for two. As he singled in the fourth, came around and scored off of that home run by Garibay. Four strikeouts now for Davis. This one popped up into the air. We'll see catcher Johnson trying to make a grab, and he does right near the back of the wall. They're behind home plate, and that's two up, two down for Tyler Davis and the Cats. Yeah, good work there by Johnson. We saw him out during pregame working on that. A lot of foul ball territory here. Looking up into that roof, the roof is closed here today. And so, you know, we talk about the sight lines. They're different than what you see week to week in college baseball, one of those being a roof. You don't play in stadiums with roofs. So a good job there by Johnson to look up, locate it, and make the grab. Third in the order, it's Como. And the first pitch to Como, a strike. So how about it here now? Four strikes in a row thrown by Davis. Besides, of course, that one that popped up foul. Here's the next one on the way to the outside. One ball and one strike. He heard me up here say that, so he decided to throw a ball on that one, Jason. You got cocky. <laughs> one and one the count. And we are here in the bottom of the six, two away. Nobody on. Rice trailing seven to two. Davis, next delivery to the inside. One and two. Or two and one, rather. Davis taking his time here. Right-handed pitch to the right-handed batter on the way. This time called a strike as he looked at it. Two and two. Yeah, late breaking action there from Davis. Just crossed it across the back side of the plate. Mentioned my grandmother earlier. She, my mom wanted everyone to know. My grandmother's enjoying listening. So appreciate you, Nanny. Good to have you out. Here's the next one. This one hit right over just out of the reach of the glove there to right field as it boy that was a, a good grab. McKenzie was trying to get down there and wasn't able to make that grab. It was a good effort but that is a single for Como. Yeah McKenzie was playing more towards the bag so he had a long way to go to get there. Made a dive and got a glove on it. A little two out single for Braden Como, Braden Como, that will take us to fourth in the order, cleaning up Guy Garib Garibay. He had the home run back in the fourth that brought in two runs, including his homer. Here's the pitch on the way. To the outside, one ball, no strikes. Garibay finding himself in two-ball territory at both of his previous at-bats before he was able to find a little bit of life. The next pitch on the way, and this one a – see that they call that one a strike. Talk about his excitement on that home run his last time up. How about hitting your first collegiate home run at Minute Maid Park? That's got to be big. Guy who grew up in Lamarck. Next one on the way is a strike. He's probably seen a lot of baseball played here for your first collegiate home run to be at a place where you've watched a lot of pros do it. We saw that excitement from him as he rounded the bases. 1-1 one, one went across, clipped the plate for a strike to bring it to one ball and two strikes on two outs. Davis trying to retire Garibay here and leave Como over at first. Bearcats leading 7-2. Davis with the wind up and the delivery. Got him looking for the third strike in the final out. 
as the Bearcats taking care of business here through six, top of the seventh coming up. Jason will have the call when we come back on the Bearcats Sports Network. probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. All right, we're back at it here, top of the seventh, as the Bearcats leading uh, seven to two. We got a new pitcher out there on the mound. We'll get to that in a minute. But Jason, you'll take over the seven, eight, and nine, man. Thanks for uh, letting me have it halfway through. Yeah, we move to the latter third of this ball game. Go to the seventh inning. Bearcats with a seven-two lead, and the Rice Owls have made a move. And it looks like no longer Deskins out there. It is Christian Cienfuegos. Cienfuegos. Christian Cienfuegos. He is a freshman out of Baytown, my hometown. Went to Goose Creek High School. That high school did not exist when I was going through school. Five foot nine, 170 pounds. Just some numbers on him. Made one appearance this year. He worked just a third of an inning. That was against Louisiana. One hit. He allowed two runs. It was a triple that he gave up. So his only action. Back in 2020, he had 11 and a third innings of work. A little bit bigger sample size for him. Had a one and one record in four appearances. Allowed 10 runs on nine hits. He did walk 10 in 11 and a third innings struck out six so he's on the opposite side of that strikeout to walk ratio that you want to be 10 to six so he's into work here in the seventh it'll be five six seven in the bearcat order gavin johnson chadwick and lofton it's the first pitch to johnson first pitch swinging chopper out to second glove backhand side carp and a nice little pick out of the dirt by bullman at first one pitch one out Johnson retired for the second time today. Got him by about a step and a half. Johnson runs good for a catcher. Certainly wasn't an easy play for Carp. It's Clayton Chadwick will be the hitter. Chadwick shows bunt, pulls it back. It's called a strike. Chadwick won for three today. He doubled and scored back in the second inning. Average sitting at 222. Four hits in 18 at bats this season for Chadwick. So that ball is in the dirt, skips away. Nice little play over there by Jackson Lofton. Yeah, Jason, bringing up uh, Brandon Deskins, who finished up one and two thirds innings, allowing two runs on a three hits. We've seen three pitchers so far. This is the third out there now for Rice. Blake Brogdon had four and a third innings. He allowed. Uh, five runs on eight hits. He was responsible for those two that were left on earlier. Bearcats leading it seven to two. Seven runs on 11 hits for the Cats. Pitch on the way and fouled off the screen. Was a hard hit. That net shot back about five or six feet. Shows you a lot of the velocity of that ball coming off the bat here by uh, Clayton Chadwick. Cienfuegos takes a long look in. One, two pitch coming. Misses outside. Evens the count up. Two balls, two strikes. Jackson Lofton waiting on deck for the Bearcats. The second pitch 
on this at bat here by uh, Sinfuegos where it's got away from the pitcher there a little bit on the dirt. 2 2 offering on the way to Loft, and that got him on the leg. Well, open the tattoo shop. We haven't seen any tonight or this afternoon, and there's the first one. The tattoo parlor is officially open. So Clayton Chadwick really caught it right off the thigh, got over to first, kind of flexing that leg a little bit. Now Chadwick's going to ask for time, and I think he's starting to feel it. It's one of those, uh, I, think, I think it's hitting him a little bit later. Now he's starting to feel it. He got to first, was okay, and then asked for time, and had to take about five, six steps down as he stretched that leg out. He caught that fastball right on the thigh. So Jackson Lofton will stand in. Lofton 0 for 3 today. Strikeout, ground out, ground out. First pitch swinging, fouls it back off the screen. Rob, did you bring your glove today? I did not. You told me to bring my glove we, today. We are in that range right now. Open air booth here, and we can certainly see something come our way possibly. And if it does, it's going to come fast where we're at. Got to be quick. Got a lot of equipment up here. 0-1 pitch to Loft, and that one is fouled off. And that one, boy. <laughs> Since the camera guy is scampering a little bit over there. Well, it's not necessarily to us, but it is some other media members. That one went way off the first base side into the second deck there. And as you called, just right next to the cameraman. So the count's 0-2 on Jackson Lofton. Tried to get something going. His last at-bat laid down a bunt. And it was fielded by the pitcher, and he was retired. Offering on the way, and that one is fouled back. That yeah, one gets up into the fourth deck here. You know, we've talked about Lofton a lot here, especially during this game, and he was originally starting, leading the lineup, got bumped down to this seven hole, and this is a young man that's a great player, just needs to find some sort of rhythm and get out of this slump that he's in. He's 0 for 3 today, still looking for that first opportunity. 0-2 offering on the way. A little soft fly lifted out into right field coming on and making the grab is Knighting. And there's one down. I'll check that two down here in the inning. Just got the bat out in front of it. And it's just a soft pop up into right. Lofton now 0 for 4 today. There's only one of two batters you mentioned earlier. The bats have been hitting here for the Bearcats, seven of their nine able to hit and get on so far today. Corbin Vines will be the hitter, the junior out of Hempstead. He's got a couple of base knocks today. Singled and drove home a run in the second, singled and scored a run in the sixth. So that fastball missed out and away. Vines, another guy who had been struggling with the bat. He had just one hit. This season coming in, he's got himself a couple of hits. Maybe straightening things out a little bit. Now Vines really got this ball game going for the Cats. They're going to throw down to first. Ooh, just getting back was Clayton Chadwick. Long the catcher for the Rice Owls. Tried to see if he could catch Chadwick napping over there. The yeah, Vines came in one for 16 on the season. Two for three today. Runners off and moving. Swing, and I think it might have been fouled off. Yep, he was diving down there to second, but he's going to have to come back. That's uh, Chadwick. Yeah, you got a great <laughs> jump. He had that stolen. Got a lot of dirt there on that right thigh as he dove down to the second bag and catches breath. Something I need to do is do a lot more running. I got a new little puppy, Jason, and was out yesterday with her, and I literally ran for about less than a minute, and I almost didn't make it up the stairs. <laughs> so I said, this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> little puppy will get you in shape, though, man. That's for yep. sure. One-two pitch coming to Vine. Swung on, and that one is going to go foul. Just kind of hooked off the screen right there with the seat's in left field. 
course, in two-out territory. A Chadwick very eager to run out there. You can see him get a pretty good leadoff off that first bag. One-two pitch coming to Vines. Chadwick off and running. The throw is in time at second, and Chadwick is caught stealing. Didn't get as good of a jump this time, and it was a great throw down to second. Chadwick is out, and that will end the inning. So the Bearcats blanked here in the seventh. We'll go to the bottom half of the frame. Sam Houston leads it 7-2 to two here on the Bearcat Sports Network. probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. Eric Barbosa, operating partner for Henson CDJR, and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero store wide with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDJR, your dealer for life. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and T.J. Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, T.J. Burdett & Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. T.J. Burdett & Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit T.J. Burdett & Sons on Facebook for more info. Back here at Minute Maid Park, Jason Barfield alongside Rob Hip. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and Tyler Davis's day is done. And Rob, he put in a good day's work. Yeah, Tyler Davis really taking care of business here, only uh, allowing in this ball game. Of course, those two runs, those runs uh, coming back in the third or back for Sam Houston in the fourth, and, or for the Rice rather in the fourth. So Davis had a nice day again. Only allowing uh, through six innings those two those two runs by the Rice Owls. Turn it over to the bullpen here, and first out for the Bearcats will be Stephen Beard, a six foot, one hundred ninety pound sophomore. He is a left-handed pitcher out of the Woodlands. As Knighting will stand in, first pitch fastball missed outside. Beard this season makes his third appearance. Four and a third innings, four hits, four runs, two earned, a walk and a strikeout. First pitch swinging here, fly ball lifted out into right field. Fature will give it a look, but that is halfway up the seats. And a rude welcoming to the ball game for Stephen Beard. Solo shot to start things off here in the bottom of the seventh for the Rice Owls, and it's now a four-run game. Knighting with a good night on that one over way out there you know you talk about probably around 360 365 over there to right a couple of rice fans were out there near that foul pole he kind of pointed at them as he rounded first so a run on the board here in the seventh that fastball misses out and away to austin bullman so beard will now look to see if he can settle in a little bit Gives up a leadoff homer in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pitch to Bullman in for a strike. Evens the count up. One ball, one strike. First run for the Owls since the fourth inning. All the runs have come off the long ball. Two home runs in this game. As there's a ground ball, that's going to get through for a base hit. Just past Beard as he put a glove out there. And it rolled into center field, so a homer and a single to start things off in the seventh. You know, you look at that Bearcat lead, seven to three, but it doesn't take long for that to get cut in half quickly. That's what I was saying earlier, a lot of baseball left still. Jay Sirianni makes his way out of the Bearcat dugout. 
Sirianni will call everybody in, the head coach for the Bearcats in his second season. Tough last year. You get your first crack at a head coaching gig and it gets cut short. And you have a lot of time to really think about how, how you want to handle a team. So getting his first, hopefully, full season in here. You know, Jason, talking a little bit more about this 21st Annual Shriners Hospital for Children's College Classic. Hosted over 30 programs in its 21-year history. A multitude of future major, major, legal, major legals participate. Uh, major leaguers participate, including, of course, All-Stars Alex Bergman. Saul Bregman, of course, when he was with LSU in 2015. Did you catch any of those? No, I did not. I did see Bregman play as that first pitch to Carp is in for a strike. Saw Bregman play in the regional when the Bearcats were at the LSU regional back in 2016. That pitch misses down and away. Been some other good ones here. Garrett Cole, Trevor Bauer, those UCLA alums in 09. David Price from Vanderbilt, Matt Carpenter, Anthony Rendon. You know, on top of that, pitch to Carp is fouled back out of play, and the count goes to one and two for Beard. Kind of on top of that, uh, this tournament typically, and we'll see how it is in a COVID year, but 100 professional scouts from all 30 major league teams. Yeah, it's a big opportunity. I mean, you know, Bearcats are going to see some scouts this year, but, you know, with Colton Kowser, but it's guys to be able to catch attention while they're out here playing. One two offering on the way is fouled back. Said 2016, 2013. Well, the regionals all kind of blend together. 2013 saw Bregman play when the Bearcats were in the LSU regional. I just still can't get over that. It was eight years ago. That ball is fouled back off the screen. Carp doing a good job staying alive here. That LSU regional, Bearcats played on a Saturday night against LSU. After the Cats knocked off Louisiana in the opening game of that regional, as the umpires have stopped play here for a moment. Bearcats on that Saturday night, the 1-0 game against LSU. Of course, Bregman, a lot of... Good talent. Aaron Nola was on the hill for LSU. The Cats tagged him for five early in that game. LSU ended up winning it six to five. Two-two pitch on the way. Chopped slow roller out to second. McKenzie gloves. Little underhand toss. Oh, he nearly didn't get it there. Almost a little too soft for Jack Rogers, who had to stretch and go get it. Rodgers just sticks the glove out, gives a little tap over for McKenzie. It was a slow roller. He went with the underhand toss and almost got caught there as Justin Long will stand in, one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Long today, 0 for 2, fly out to right, ground out to or pop out to third. First pitch swinging here, fouls it off the screen right over top of that Rice dugout. Jason, I wanted to let our listeners know that, by the way, when you're going back recalling these games and you're mentioning numbers and stats and players, the, Jason's doing this all by memory. There is no notes, so that's incredible. That's a photographic memory, man. Of course, my wife wants to know why I forgot to take out the trash this morning. That pitch misses outside. I can't remember that it's Friday and the trash can go out, but you know I can I can tell you what happened in Baton Rouge eight years ago. Counts even up, one ball, one strike to Justin Long, one down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Offering on the way from Beard. That one is pop foul out of play, so the count will go to one and two. Oh, you got to make the play off the first hop. Daddy out there. Missed it at first, but got it on the second hop. Handed it over to his kiddo. A lot of memories being made here today. So 
So runner down at second for the Owls. One out bottom of the seventh. One-two pitch coming from Beard. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Steven Beard, and there's two down in the inning. That's good for Beard. It's taken him a little while to settle in. He went through the first two, of course, allowing that home run to lead things off here in the seventh. But that's what he needs to just settle in here, not let this one get away. Bearcats with that four-run advantage, 7-3 to three here in the seventh. Hal Hughes will stand in, the number nine hitter in the order. He is 0 for 2 today. First pitch. A little off-speed offering there from Beard missed outside. Seven three Bearcat lead. One zero pitch misses outside. Bearcats got on the board first back in the second inning. Got a run in the second, put two on the board in the third. Two in the fifth, two in the sixth. There's seven runs on 11 hits for Rice. It was two in the fourth and then one here in the seventh, both coming off home runs. That one is fouled back off the screen. A two-run shot in the fourth for the Owls and a solo homer to lead off the seventh. I mentioned the chalk down there near home plate earlier was getting ruffled around. It's almost hard to make out those squares now, the, the batting boxes. Uh, more often than not, that's wiped out by the second hitter of the game. Those guys like to get up there and dig that box around a little bit, knock that chalk off. 2-1 offering on the way from Beard. Curveball, nice-looking pitch. That one had Hughes frozen. Saw the knees buckle. And the count's now even up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Beard trying to limit the damage to just the one run. Long look in from Beard. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Beard gets the strikeout. And the Owls leave one stranded. They do get one run in, but Beard a nice bounce back after the leadoff homer in the inning. And we will go to the eighth inning. Cats on top, 7-3 to three on the Bearcat Sports Network. used to and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Back here at Minute Maid Park, we move to the eighth inning. Rice got one in the top half, or the bottom half of the seventh. But a nice work there by Steven Beard to come back, get back-to-back -back strikeouts, and turn it back over to the Bearcat Bats. So it'll be Corbin Vines who will lead it off for the Bearcats. He was in the box. Last inning when Chadwick was caught stealing. So it'll be 8 9 1 for the Bearcats. Vines McKenzie, then back around to the top of the order for Colton Kalzer. Christian Cienfuegos back out to work for the Owls. Vines a couple of base knocks today. Vines singled and drove home a run in the second. Singled and came around to score in the sixth. First pitch, fly ball lifted into right field. Knighting tracking over towards the corner and makes the grab. 
So one pitch, one out. That'll bring Anthony McKenzie to the plate. McKenzie had that homer back in the sixth. Talk about getting your first collegiate home run. That was McKenzie's first college home run. First pitch as he'll turn around to the left side of the plate now. Special for a kid who grew up in Houston. Had a former Astro as a head coach, Lance Berkman. McKenzie pops this one into right side. He foul territory and coming over and making the grab. Nice catch out there. And that was the shortstop, Hughes, who came over to get it. He had to go a long way from the shortstop position as he slid to his knees right there in front of that spot that juts out towards left field. And there's two quick outs here. So we'll go back to the top of the order for Colton Kowser. Yeah, I was going to mention Hughes just took a nice little scoop down there to hop that one in for the second out. First pitch to Kowser. He shows bunt and pulls it back. Kowser a couple of hits today. Doubled and scored in the third, singled and scored in the fifth. Walked in the sixth and was left stranded at second. He's reached three of his four, eight, four at bats. Fastball misses down low. Counts 2-0 and oh on Kowser. Two down here in the top of the eighth inning. Bearcats leading the Rice Owls 7-3. 2-0 -oh pitch on the way. That one just missed outside. And it counts 3-0 and oh to Kowser. Christian Smith waiting on deck. He's got a couple of base knocks today as well. Pitch on the way to Kowser, 3-0 offering in for a strike. Kowser was taking all the way. So the count goes to 3-1 and one to Kowser. Offering on the way, and that one missed inside. Second walk of the day for Colton Kowser. That one a little bit different. His last walk, he had gotten an 0-2 count and was able to fight his way back and draw the free pass. This time it was a 3-0 count. It's been a productive day for Kowser, getting on base and four of his five at-bats. It's not a bad day. So Christian Smith will stand in. He's not having a bad day either. He's got two singles, two for four today. Scored back in the fifth inning. First pitch. This is high. Boy, Kowser was about a third of the way down over to second, and he quickly came back to first. Well, Fridays at Minute Maid have been good to the Bearcats. They won their Friday game back in 2014, knocking off TCU. That curve ball is in for a strike. In 2018, the Friday game was against Vanderbilt. That was an exciting one. The Bearcats came from behind. Jordan Cannon homered in the ninth to tie that game. And then it was Hunter Hearn with the walk-off homer in the bottom of the tenth to knock off Vanderbilt. Pitch on the way, misses outside. By the way, Jay, I'm telling you, Jason is doing this from memory. I just want everyone to know these minute details – Jason is pulling this from the epicenter of his cranium. I've watched these highlights a lot. <laughs> That's impressive, man. So that pitch misses outside. Just have to remember the day and the trash. That's right. <laughs> then, you're gold, then you're golden, man. It, it's a struggle. <laughs> Count is three and one to Christian Smith. Fouls that one back off the screen, so the count will go full. That's going to give Colton Kowser a chance to get a head start here with two outs. Yeah, Smith, that last one he fouled, he took a very late swing on it. Kowser's speed here, he gets a good jump on the pitch. If Smith can find a gap, Kowser will get out and run. 
He is in scoring position right now. 3-2 pitch on the way. Pitch was high. So Kowser will walk down to second. Smith over to first. Back-to-back -back two out walks. When you're trailing by four, that's the last thing you want to see if you're a Rice Owl. Especially with a guy like Jack Rogers waiting on deck. You don't want to put base runners in scoring position ahead of him. Yeah, Cien Fuegos retired too quick to start this inning, but then since then, as you just said, allowing two to reach on walks with runners on one and two. Rogers in the second, and an RBI double. He's also reached on a walk today. First pitch swing, he took a big hack. He was out in front. Rogers now four doubles on the season. He's got his batting average to 429. Runners in scoring position, he's hitting 500. That ball's in the dirt, skips away. Everybody will move up 90 feet. It'll be a wild pitch, and now two guys in scoring position for Jack Rogers. Second wild pitch that we've seen today by uh, the Rice Owls pitching staff allowing Bearcat runners to advance. So Rogers with five runs driven in. They're just going to put him on. Not going to mess with the 400 hitter. They will take their chances with Blake Facher. Load them up. Second time we've seen bases loaded here for the Cats also in this game. Bearcats cashed in on it last time. Played it a couple. Facher trying to do the same. Two down here in the top of the eighth inning. Pitch on the way. Misses up high. And now we're going to get a visit out to the mound from the Rice Owls. That's what I call the shave pitch on that one, Jason. It gets a little close. you got to kind of turn your cheek. A few whiskers may whistle their way off on those pitches. That's not the way I want to shave. <laughs> not me either, man. I just prefer the traditional methods. Well, Jason, wanted to acknowledge some of our wonderful friends joining us on the In the Booth feed. We've had some text messages come in throughout this game. Good friend Greg Laird saying, uh, nothing quite like baseball on the radio. Great job. Good to hear from you, Greg. And also Jason Thompson uh, saying sounding great. He's enjoying listening as well. We had a chance to talk to Jason Thompson at halftime during the Bearcats basketball game the other night versus the Islanders. And we've got a lot going on. Basketball doing very well. Only two losses in the Southland. And that big contest coming up just tomorrow, the doubleheader, the women playing at 2 o'clock and the men playing at uh, 5. And then it's on to the Southland Conference Tournament. You know, we were talking earlier at the gate, Jason, while we were waiting to get in, that you and I both looks like we're going to be calling football on a Saturday and then possibly heading over to Katy for basketball that night uh, coming up a week or so from now. A lot of back and forth, earning our miles on I-45 this weekend and next. So I guess I'll be doing a little more of the 99, get off 45 and take 99 around to Katy next week. Blake Facher stands in. Bases loaded. Two down here, top of the eighth inning. Cats leading by four, looking to see if they can extend that. Pitch on the way to Facher. Fastball misses outside. And the count is now 2-0. and oh. Facher today, 0 oh for 4. He's looking to get off the schneid. A couple of strikeouts in his last two at-bats. But a base knock here would be big. 2-0 offering on the way. Line drive into center field for a base hit. One run will score. The Cats will send another one in. Two run score. And a base is loaded. Two RBI single for Blake Facher. And the Cats lead it 9-3. How about that Facher? Glancing it over to left as it rolled, bringing in two. Cook the ribeyes. The steaks are tasting good here in Houston, Texas today. Yeah, I'll just talk about steak. I think you need to buy me one on the way home today. <laughs> You've got me hungry for a steak. 
So the Cats once again have responded. Rice scores in the bottom half. The Cats have come back in the top half and scored again second time today. Two runs in here, and Gavin Johnson will hit. That pitch in for a strike. Johnson's having a good day at the plate. He's responsible for three of the runs scored today. Had an RBI single in the third, a two RBI double in the fifth. He's got runners at the corners and two outs, a chance to pick up another one. Johnson now with five runs driven in this season. That pitch misses in the dirt. Oh, just held there by Long. I think one of the most impressive things today about this game so far for the Bearcats, seven of their nine batters getting hits, getting on. This is a totally different offense, and the bats have been very hot. Uh, going back to that three-game skid. Yeah, once again, something they knew they were capable of, just hadn't seen it yet. 1-1 one, one pitch to Johnson. Chopper right back up. Cienfuegos gets a glove. His only play is at home, and safe is the call at the plate. Jack Rogers had to dance around a little tippy-toe in the box, got a toe on the back side of the plate, beat the tag. And the umpires are going to get together now. Are they going to talk about this? And they're all four meeting up. Jack Rogers, boy, he just slipped right in there. It was a good effort. Gives Cienfuegos a little bit of credit here, but even more so, Rogers darting his way. We'll see what the official ruling is down here. I think they are immediately going to yep. go to the replay here and that was called by the umpires the the umpiring crew called for that one that was get back over to our umpires here Wes Hamilton the first base umpire we'll get another look at it here in the booth once again tough from that center field cam but it doesn't look like they ever really made the tag we might get a look at it here as Rogers came in had to dance around to the back part of the plate uh -huh. Toes on the plate, so if that was a question whether or not he got the plate, no doubt about it. On that last look we just saw, I'm not sure he ever really got tagged. I think this one stands. Second replay of the day. We had the both of them have been plays at the plate actually. Now here's a good look. We'll see here if it's they're looking at that frame. That's a, you can't tell there. That's inconclusive. It's another one of these angles, Jason, to where the angle isn't just, it's not at the right, it's not at the right angle. I don't know any yeah. other way to describe it. It's very hard to discern if it was called safe, unless there's any type of evidence to overturn it, I think you've got to keep it safe. And you know, with Major League Baseball, when they've got their replay system in place, there's a lot more cameras at play here. I would be willing to bet this probably isn't bigger than a five camera show today. Um, so, you know, we're getting another look at it up on the board as they're trying to examine every angle. But I don't nice. I don't think he ever got the tag on him. And certainly the toe caught the plate. So I think this is going to stand. It's really close. We were looking at it on the replay. Of course, the screen here is huge at Minute Maid. Uh, as you look out over there off right center up top, I mean, that thing is bigger than five of my houses put together. And I'll tell you, it, it was so close. The foot was down. If there was a tag, the foot was already on the plate. Yeah, I think they're looking at two things there. Did the did the foot catch the plate, and was the tag made in time? And I think both of those actually go in the Bearcats' favor. But they're taking a long time to look at it. Again, we're in the middle of a, a replay timeout here moments ago. Headset is now off, and now... The second umpire is going to take a look or take a listen here. What happens if all of them, do they start going to, you know, folks up in the booth asking them to take a look? Well, if they ask me, I say he's <laughs> safe. We'll see what the call is. It's safe. All right. There we go. So another little two RBI single there, Fature, and that'll stand. How about that? You know, they just said on the PA that the call was overturned and it was safe, but I thought the initial call was safe as well. Yeah, it was. And so Rice will go to the bullpen. They will make a move. So we'll have a new pitcher in the game, and so while they do that, we will step aside. Bearcats have opened this one up in the eighth. They lead it 10-3. to This is Sam Houston Baseball and the Bearcats Sports Network.
and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-40 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. New pitcher for the Rice Owls is Garrett Zascoda. As he is in to work. Three runs already in for the Bearcats. And he will inherit a couple of runners. Six foot, 170 pound freshman. He is out of Sealy. He is making his Second appearance of the season. He's worked four innings this year, four hits, two runs, both earned, four strikeouts, and a walk. Opponents hitting 330 against him. Last worked a week ago at Louisiana. So that'll bring Clayton Chadwick to the plate now. Runners at first and second for the Bearcats. Johnson at first, Facher at second. Chadwick has a double today, scored a run. He was hit by a pitch his last time up in the seventh. Fastball in for a strike. Big inning here for the Bearcats. Three runs already in, and they still have runners on the base paths. A one offering on the way. Chadwick able to hold the hands back. They're not even going to check. So to even up the count, one ball, one strike. Cats back in action here tomorrow, 3 o'clock game, taking on Texas Tech. Pitch on the way, fastball misses up high. They'll round things out. Sunday, 3 o'clock game, taking on TCU. Two teams they have faced here before and beaten here before. Offering on the way, swing and a miss. It's back in 2014. Saw so Texas Tech, TCU and Texas wins over TCU and Texas Tech. Bearcats went on that year to go to the TCU Regional. 2-2 pitch, line drive, it's gonna get in for a base hit. Fature will come around. He will score. RBI single for Chadwick, and the Cats lead it 11 to 3. Well, Sam Houston just won from batting around, and we mentioned earlier Jackson Lofton. He's 0 for 4. Here's an opportunity for Lofton as one of the only remaining of the night now or of the game to get on. Yeah, Fature got a hit his last time up. It was his first of the game. So everybody with a base hit now, except for Jackson Lofton, who stands in here. 0 for 4 today. Strikeout, a couple of ground outs, and a fly out. And a curveball in for a strike. Now this is a great opportunity for him to pull out of that slump that he's been in. Yeah, one hit and 24 at-bats this season. Mentioned though, just three strikeouts. He's been putting the ball in play. Fouls that one off. And he's down in the count 0 and 2. 
Boy, you can just hear how hard he hits, though, that bat. Making contact, and then as it's so open in here, you hear it echo off the entire facility. We don't have the effects feed for this game up here, but I can imagine that one would have sounded beautiful if we had the full effects. 0-2 offering on the way to Lofton. Swing and a miss. Lofton down on strikes. But a big frame for the Bearcats. They bust out for four here in the eighth. And we will go to the bottom half of the frame. Bearcats leading it 11-3 here on the Bearcats Sports Network. repair shops achieve ICAR gold class status, the highest training level recognized in the industry. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 is proud to be one of them. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. They invest in training because they would never cut corners with your family's safety at stake, and neither should you. Get your vehicle repaired at Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45, where your safety is their top priority. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and T.J. Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, T.J. Burdett & Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. T.J. Burdett & Sons, exit 118. North I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. Operating partner for Henson CDJR, and we're letting the good deals roll during the President's Day event. We're rolling out zero with zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments for three months on all new 2020 Jeeps and Ram trucks. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson CDJR, your dealer for life. Back here at Minute Maid Park, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Jason Barfield here alongside Rob Hip. Sam Houston leading Rice 11 to three. And the Cats are gonna go back to their bullpen here as Lance Lusk will be out to work for the Bearcats. Lusk this year, three innings pitched, allowed six hits, four runs all earned. So he is Looking to see if he can start trimming that ERA down, which stands at 12 right now. First pitch, fastball in for a strike. His final numbers for Steven Beard. He only pitched in that one inning, allowing one run on two hits. Of course, one of them that uh, was the home run, I believe. That fastball misses outside. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Lusk stands in, six foot one, 180 pounds. He is a junior out of spring. Came to the Bearcats from Angelina College. That one is chopped over in front of the Bearcat dugout. Skips off the screen. It's one of the few that we've seen foul that actually is either in or right near the dugout. We haven't seen too many of them. All these foul balls here today have you know, went up into the decks. Ooh, that pitch just missed. Evens the count up. One ball, one strike. Two balls. Two, two, yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Luska preseason all Southland Conference selection by perfect game. Offering on the way, that one is ripped down the line. It's gonna get down in the corner. It'll be extra bases. Dunlap ran set rounds first into second, and he's got a lead off double to start things off. Yeah, he just ripped that one right over to 
left field there, rolled state fair. And I'm going to tell you, Jason, that young man is fast. I was watching him run. If that would have been any bobbled around over there, he could have easily went for a triple. Yeah, he was he was thinking two right out of the box. It was a no-doubter for him as Kate Edwards will be the hitter. Edwards today is one for three. First pitch swinging, chased it down in the dirt. Talking a little bit more about Lance Lusk. In 2020, he had a good first six outings of the year for the Bearcats. 15 and two-thirds innings. A 115 ERA. He posted a 2-0 record. All of his outings out of the bullpen. 17 strikeouts in 15 and two-thirds innings. That ball is swung on, and did he get a piece of it? Yes. Fouled back. Johnson went running back to the screen. He wasn't sure. Yeah, six appearances for the Bearcats in 2020. One save, two wins. Struck out 17. Did give up 16 hits. But it really didn't cost him. Only allowed two runs. So able to work around some base runners, which is what he's got here. A leadoff double to start off the bottom of the eighth for the Rice Owls. Bearcats leading 11 to three, trying to notch their third Friday win here at the College Classic. Beat TCU in the opener in 2014, Vanderbilt in the opener in 2018, leading the Rice Owls here in 2021. Lusk takes a long look in. Pitch on the way. Yeah, he offered at that. And a strikeout for Lusk. And a first out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Good little confidence booster there for Lusk. You know, entering only pitching in three innings so far this season. And after allowing that double moments ago, that's what he needs to really try to settle in here. Yeah, he's going against the heart of the plate. This is the order that part of the order that's been getting it done as Como stands in. Two for three today. Single in the first, single in the sixth. Runner standing down at second and one out for the Owls. Fastball from Lusk up and in. Stands over, kind of body built at bent at an angle. Got that right hand dangling down. There is a hot shot out to second, and it's booted there by McKenzie, and that's going to bring a run to score. First error of the game for McKenzie, or for the Bearcats. I'm sure they'll score that one in air because it was right into his glove, and that allowed the run to come in and score. Yeah, I tell you what, McKenzie, he was back on the grass. <laughs> that ball might have just come off the lip where the infield dirt and the outfield grass meet. And McKenzie wasn't able to play it cleanly. So a run is in for the Rice Owls. It's now an 11-4 game. Garibay stands in. First pitch to him is in for a strike. Garibay with a two-run shot back in the fourth inning. Offering on the way, a little half-hearted swing. He's down in the count 0-2. So a leadoff double for the Owls, and they get the run home. Still a seven-run Bearcat lead. That fastball misses out and away. Count goes to one and two. One down here in the bottom of the eighth. Each team now with an error in the game. Well, 
Lusk comes with the pitch. Oh, he took something off. <laughs> Another strikeout for Lusk. Scarabe went and chased that one down low. Couple of punch outs here in the inning for Lusk. And with two down, Knighting will be the hitter. Knighting homered his last time up. A solo shot in the seventh. It fouls that one straight back. Just a little bit higher and we could have had our souvenir ball, Jason. I think that one would have challenged the press box over here to our <laughs> left. That's where you got to reach out with a net on a mop stick, you know. Maybe get you a fishing net. Nice group of media here covering the game. Got Richard Dean from the Richard from the Chronicle sitting next to me. In the dirt, it's going to skip away from Johnson. That's going to allow Como to take second. Seen a couple of wild pitches here in this game. That's the first one there by Lusk, as you just mentioned, allowing Como over to second. So runner now down at second for Rice. One run in here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pitch from Lusk, fastball, called a strike. And Lusk out in front, one and two. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Lance Lusk, the third pitcher to work for the Bearcats. Tyler Davis went the first six. Steven Beard in the seventh. Lusk here in the eighth. One, two offering on the way. Fly ball out into left field. On the run. And Chadwick makes the catch. He got a great first step on that one and was able to catch it right at the knees. And that does it for the Owls here at the bottom of the eighth. They get one, but that's it. And we will go to the ninth inning. Bearcats on top 11 to four here on the Bearcats Sports Network. probably wouldn't choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. It's a new year with new opportunity. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and T.J. Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, T.J. Burdett & Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. T.J. Burdett & Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit T.J. Burdett & Sons on Facebook for more info. Eric Barbosa, General Manager at Henson Chevy Buick GMC, and we're letting the good deals roll during our parade of savings. We're rolling out 10 models with payments under $300 a month. We'll even throw in a big screen TV. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductible and unlimited miles at no cost to you, and we even deliver for free. Get rolling with big savings today at Henson Chevy, your dealer for life. Back here at Minute Maid Park, we go to the night. Bearcats leading at 11 to four. New pitcher on to work for the Rice Owls, Joshua Larzable, a six foot, 225 pound junior. He is out of North Shore High School. He is working for the first time this season. Just his eighth career appearance for the Owls. 
He has a total of seven innings of work, allowed 10 hits, 12 runs, opponents hitting 294 against him. So hadn't seen much action. Started his Rice career in 2018, did not pitch in 2019. Making his first appearance here in 2021 as Corbin Bynes will lead it off for the Bearcats. Zaskota only pitching one inning for Rice, allowing one hit, no runs in that previous inning. That pitch misses down low in the dirt. I think that might have gotten our home plate umpire as it skipped up and caught him on the forearm. Joe Harris is calling the balls and strikes. He's going to feel that one. Skipped up, got him right on the forearm. He didn't rub it, though. Just flexed that hand a little bit. <laughs> He's going to feel it tonight, though. The tattoo shop doesn't open just for the players, sometimes for the umpires. 2-0 pitch to Vines in for a strike. Vines with two hits today, an RBI single in the second, a single in the sixth that he came around to score. That one is fouled out of play. Get up in the club level. We got a nice vantage point here today, Rob, right behind home plate, Spanish language booth for the Houston Astros. Yeah, just a beautiful setting and that ball is lined in for a base hit by Vines out into left field. He's got his third single of the day. How about Corbin Vines? Came into today one for 16 on the season. He gets three base knocks to start off his weekend here at Minute Maid Park. No better place to do it if you're in some sort of a slump. How about coming here to Minute Maid? Or the majors play, of course, and taking care of business here and of course with this many batters eight of your nine getting on and hits uh, it's just been a, a great day for the Bearcats all across the board fastball misses outside to Anthony McKenzie talk about having a great day here Anthony McKenzie homeward that was back in the six it was a two-run shot it was a no doubter gets underneath this one lifts it into center field Garaby just back pedals now comes in a few steps Pretty much right where he started, makes the grab. A one out here in the top of the ninth inning, and we'll go back around to the top of the order. As Colton Kowser will stride to the plate. Kowser's had himself a good day. Officially two for three, but he has walked twice as well. Scored three runs today. Still hadn't driven in a run yet this year. Still waiting for that first Colton Kowser RBI. <laughs> That's about all he's lacking on his stat sheet. First pitch misses inside. He's carrying a 318 batting average this season. Seven hits and 22 at-bats. He has scored eight times this year. He's also drawn six walks on the season. That one misses down low, and the count goes to... 2-0 to Kowser. Jason, I was going to mention earlier on that previous out is only the third time in this game that we have seen something pop up over to center. Garibay has not been that busy out there at center tonight. That pitch is in for a strike to Kowser. Curve ball down and in. Seen a lot of them go left, a lot of them go right, but again, not too many straightaway center. Kowser, the sophomore out of Cypress, waits on a 2-1 pitch. Fastball missed in, and the count goes to 3-1 to Kowser. Showing a lot of patience at the plate, not trying to force anything. Pitch on the way, missed in. Third walk of the day for Colton Kowser. <laughs> How about that? It's, you know, don't necessarily look at your batting average just look at your on base and Colton Kowser getting on every single time today except the first one he let off and other than that <laughs> wow Christian Smith will stand in he's been on base quite a bit today 
A single in the first, a single in the fifth. Walked and scored in the eighth. First pitch to Smith is in for a strike. Carrying a 3.04 average this year. Of course, that walk forcing Vines over to second, so he's in scoring position. Took a big hack at the curveball, came up empty. Christian Smith quickly down in a hole 0 and 2. One out here, top of the ninth. Bearcats leading 11 to 4 over the Rice Owls. Two teams that really needed a win. Cats 1 and 4 on the season. Rice trying to get to 500. They're 3 and 4 on the year. Pitch on the way, curveball in the dirt. Good take by Smith, good stop there by Long. Count goes to one and two. Again, Cats back in action tomorrow, taking on Texas Tech, three o'clock game. So if you're not in Huntsville for basketball against SFA, you can come down here and watch a little Bearcat baseball. Fastball, that one missed outside. The count evens up, two balls, two strikes. It's a big basketball game tomorrow for take, Sam Houston. Tell you what, it takes a lot to pull me away from Minute Maid watching the Bearcats, <laughs> but SFA basketball with a conference championship on the line, I'm there. 2-2 Two -two offering on the way to Smith. Curveball called strike three. He knew it. He spun and started making his walk back to the dugout. And there's two down here in the top of the ninth inning. That'll bring Jack Rogers to the plate. Rogers doubled in the third, drove home a run and scored, walked in the eighth and came in to score. 429 average. That one is fouled back. How about, it? How about it? it's OPS for you? 1317 OPS. That, of course, is on base percentage plus slugging percentage. He is slugging 762 this year. Wow. A home run and four doubles among his nine hits. He's driven in five, scored six. Another guy expecting to hear his name called when the Major League Baseball draft comes around and expecting it to hear it called early. And he keeps putting up days like he is today. It's going to be earlier and earlier. So that pitch misses outside for a ball. It's a thing, too. You see a lot of these big numbers from guys that are only sophomores, juniors. Just opportunities to continue to grow and develop and mature. Pitch on the way to Rogers. That's going to get in for a base hit. Vines will be wounded around, and he will score. Kowser is hung up between second and third. The tag will be placed. He is out, but it'll be an RBI for Jack Rogers, and the Cats tack one on here in the ninth inning. We will go to the bottom half. Bearcats leading at 12 to four here on the Bearcats Sports Network. choose a doctor who's never been to medical school. So when your car needs major repairs after a collision, why would you take your car to a body shop that's never been trained? Amaya's Collision Center is among only 15% of collision repair businesses to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold class shop. They know the latest repair techniques, how to find hidden damage, and how to repair your car's critical safety features so they work properly again. With the safety of your vehicle and your family at stake, choose trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45. It's a new year with 
new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are near record high, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with high prices and straight deals. Right now, get $6.50 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $8 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get paid the most anywhere. TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell Truck Stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Bearcats leading the Rice Owls 12 to 4 and looking to make it 3 and 0 on a Friday at Minute Maid. Lance Lusk will be back out to work for the Bearcats. Lusk in his second inning of work, trying to finish things off for Tyler Davis who looks to move to 2 and 0 on the season. It'll be 6 7 8 in the order for the Rice Owls and they will send a pinch hitter to the plate. Nathan Becker will be on to hit. Becker a 125 average this year, first pitch in for a strike. Becker a freshman out of Jersey Village, chops one foul. Quick little 0-2 here on Becker. Lance Luss settled in nicely in the eighth after that double. Becker in his last full season of baseballs, he sends a ground ball out to short, fielded by Lofton. And there is one out here in the ninth. I was just going to say he hit 406 for Jersey Village. The guy that Rice Owls, I'm sure, have high hopes for. Grounds out here, and there's one down here in the ninth inning. Had to bring Carp to the plate. Actually, another pinch hitter. Johnny Hoyle will hit for the Owls. Takes the first pitch for a strike. So Lusk going right after the Owls here in the night. Fastball chopped down to third. Vines fields, fires across the diamond. Nice pick, Jack Rogers. I had to go into that? the dirt to get it, and there's two down here in the ninth. How about that? Vines with good field work over there at third, and then Rogers, as you said, down in the dirt, able to make the grab. Look at that extension. We saw it on the replay, too. Just extending, reaching down, kept that right foot on the first base bag. That's how you do it. So Rice will send one more pinch hitter to the plate. So three pinch hitters here in the ninth in a 12-4 game. And Antonio Cruz will hit. The sophomore. First pitch to Antonio Cruz in for a strike. And Rob, I'm going to... I'm going to admit, I, I feel old. Why is that? His grandfather is Jose Cruz. My favorite player growing go. up was Jose Cruz. How about that? Jose Cruz Jr., his father. One of the first baseball games I called as a freshman at Sam Houston was against the Rice Owls with Jose Cruz Jr. playing. There is a swing and a miss. Lusk out in front. So, yeah, I, I feel old. Jose Cruz was my favorite player growing up. When I was a kid, that was the guy. The high bat, high leg kick. Part of that 86 Astro team. Won the Western Division. It's a one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Lusk gets the strikeout. And the Bearcats wrap this one up against the Rice Owls. A 12-4 win. For the Cats, they get their second W of the season. Both of them have come with Tyler Davis getting the start for the Bearcats. He had another good outing today. He went six, and the Bearcats get this Minute Maid College Classic off to a great start with the win. They have 
yet to lose on a Friday at Minute Maid Park. We'll have a quick post-game wrap-up when we come back. Stay with us. Bearcats getting a victory after a three-game three skid, 12-4 versus Rice here at Minute Maid. We'll be back in just a few moments again with a very quick post-game wrap-up. Stay with us. And back here at Minute Maid Park. Winners today, the Bearcats, they knock off the Rice Owls 12 to four. Post game show here, winner, Tyler Davis gets the win for the Bearcats, Brockton gets the loss for the Rice Owls. And Rob, this is what the Bearcats needed. They needed a W here and they were able to come down here and get it. I've talked so much today about that three game skid, of course losing uh, two in a row versus UTSA in that series just a weekend ago and then dropping a tough one at Baylor where they did not score any runs but the bats here hot tonight Sam Houston in control how about 15 hits 12 runs on those 15 hits only one error they left nine on you mentioned Davis earlier with the win now 2-0 in this very young season he pitches six innings uh, with five hits only allowing two runs uh, both of those uh, runs were earned he struck out five only one wild pitch a great outing today by Davis coming in behind him. We saw Beard come in for an inning and then Lance Lust to close this one out in two innings, allowing one run on one hit. But Jason, uh, Fridays have been generous. You mentioned earlier to Sam Houston and this Bearcat baseball club. They needed a victory. And how about it tonight with seven of or eight of their nine batsmen getting on, getting hits. Uh, still a little bit of a slump for Jackson Lofton, but you know the good news is when you're in that slump, you know that he's due next game. So we'll hopefully see a turnaround uh, tomorrow versus Texas Tech. But, Jason, your final thoughts. It was a good one here. Great call. Yeah, it was one the Bearcats needed. Uh, you know, so much about baseball is, you know, what did you do the day before? And, you know, they, they had that loss lingering from Baylor and um, able to get one against Rice. And now you've got a little momentum as you get ready to face a couple of top 20 opponents in Texas Tech and TCU. Yeah, not only that, you're also facing, of course, to round out the uh, 21st Shriners Hospital Classic, but then you also face another Big 12 team on Tuesday, another top 20 ranked opponent in the University of Texas. You mentioned Rice while ago, Brodgan uh, with the loss. He is now 0 of 2 in the season. He pitched for four and a third, allowing five runs on eight hits. Uh, all five of those runs were earned as well. Well, Jason, been a fun one, man. I've enjoyed sitting up here with you. And you know, this I'm going to admit it. You know, I didn't want to admit this publicly, but I will. This was my first trip to Minute Maid Park. Is it really? It was my first trip. When you were saying wow. 100, I didn't want to put myself under the bus <laughs> when you said you've been here over 100 times. It was just very casual. I've been here over 100 times. Uh, you know, and I'm sitting here, wow, this is pretty exciting. <laughs> so, Jason, been a fun one, man. Thank you. Yep, let's do it again Sunday. All right, your final again, the Bearcats, 12 Rice Owls on four. Jason Barfield and I will be back with the call on Sunday. Uh, due to basketball obligations, we will not be here for that call on Saturday tomorrow versus Texas Tech. But then on Sunday, it's Texas Christian University versus Sam Houston. Of course, you can get all the information you need at GoBearCats.com. For Jason Barfield, I'm Rob Hipp. A special thank you to Ben Reichert as well, Bobby Williams, the athletic director, and everyone who helps make us uh, gives us the opportunity to have these broadcasts. We sincerely appreciate it. As I end every broadcast, reminding you, this early afternoon that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other, friends. Provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand of support. Somebody out there today needs you. Good afternoon, and God bless from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. We'll see you, friends.